times have you been at the beach with your friends, just cracking open some cold ones with the boys, kicking back with a nutsack, looking at your bro's butt crack, and all of a sudden you want to start grilling, but you don't want to go to land where it's safe to grill, you want a grill in the water with you. But unfortunately, there's nothing like that on the market. And luckily, with the way the funding for this and the unrealistic goal of $200,000, it's looking like there's never going to be something like that on the market, and for very good reason. It's the float and grill, aka the float and kill whoever's trying to grill on this mother This is like an extreme sport for grilling. It's like a f***ing circus act. This is an evil Knievel stunt trying to grill on one of these bad boys with some waves coming in. All it's gonna take is one good wave to throw this grill right in your face as you're trying to cook something up and you're fucked. And if it doesn't hurt you or kill you, it's at least gonna throw off your food. There's nothing to prevent the food from even sliding off. You would have to be grilling on straight glass, just absolutely waveless, windless, and no one within five yards of this grill who could accidentally breathe a little too heavy and push the food off of it. I also like how the clip is in slow motion because I imagine they did this four or five times and the food kept flying off because of the waves, so they had to do it in slow motion. This is all the time they could get. Now common sense tells you that a wave would absolutely destroy this little science project here of grilling on the water. Now let's just go ahead and say this thing works like a dream. It stabilizes itself and it never moves with a wave so there's no danger of it flying up and popping you in the mouth, giving you a nice little smooch and really f***ing up your face. Let's say it just works perfectly like the creator envisions here. Well one thing that will not, under no circumstance, work is you will never be able to cut anything on this grill. You'll have to take it to land to cut the steaks anyway. So what is the point in grilling them on the water? You're gonna have to go to land anyway to finish off the food. It's just stupid, it makes no sense. It's a shit invention, but it's not getting funded anyway. Just thought it was worth throwing out there. That's it. So yeah. here's a nice kick charter project for you. The Eco Weather. It claims to be able to heat or cool the interior of any vehicle disregarding engine use and can be activated from any mobile device. Boy howdy does that sound amazing. I know it says it disregards engine use, but this is certainly getting my engine revved. This is some from the future. Let's go ahead and check out the Kickstarter video. Did you catch all that? I'll go ahead and replay it for all of you out there that may not have been able to digest all the information it just tossed at you. It was a lot and it really explained a lot of different things, so I'll go ahead and replay it, just for the sake of clarity. And that about sums it up. There you have it. The Eco Weather. Everything you need to know about it. A four second video. It looks like a time bomb that you just set in your car. This looks like something Jack Bauer would have been diffusing during the 24 run. This shit doesn't look like it could heat or cool anything. It, it's basically just a computer fan, a little part of a fire extinguisher, and some spider web. I can't see this doing anything other than being a great weapon to use against a home intruder trying to burgle your- You just toss one of these at him, and if the impact doesn't give him a concussion, it'll at least scare them enough. Holy- Is that an eco-weather? My god, this man's too real, I'm out of here. This looks like a toy from a cereal box that no kid would ever want. This looks like a placeholder in a video game, like a stock asset. It looks like a guitar amplifier mixed with dog- This is just a horrible project all around, I don't need to go into detail. There's no explanation of the team working on it, their qualifications, it doesn't explain exactly how it's going to accomplish its goal. Kickstarter, videos, four seconds, that's it. What's up everybody, it's Critical. Someone sent me this commercial in an email, and it's something I'd like to break down and watch with all of you, because it's very interesting for a very interesting product called the Mr. Pung. There was no sound for the commercial, so I added my own beatboxing track. Now the first scene, obviously their house is haunted by a dirty, stinky toilet. That's just yucky. But now I don't get this scene. Obviously I understand what the little girl on the right's trying to convey. She's got a tummy ache because she got to take a big old down to drop that steaming loaf. Albeit she's a horrible actor here, she's not selling it at all. I don't really feel the shit cramps or the pain through her acting. She's like the ass of Butterfield of infomercials. 
But the dude on the left, I don't get. He's like holding his Johnson and he's screaming. It looks like he's coming in his pants. I guess even in that situation, that could also call for a non-clogged toilet so you can just dump your load off in the toilet and flush it down for easy cleanup. <laughs> There we go, those are the two most common items that fall into toilets in Plague Modern Plumbing. A toupee and a stuffed bunny. I don't know why they felt the need to drown and torture that poor innocent bunny on the right, but it's gonna come back ten times as strong like a f***ing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. This is what happens when you eat too many marijuana cigarettes. You shit them all out and you clog up your toilet. Pretty standard protocol when you get this stinky stink toilet water on your hands, go ahead and wipe it all over your body. I typically like to put my hands in my mouth to clean them when something like that happens, or maybe rub my eyes with them because it really helps accelerate the cleansing process. So here's the product, and you saw a little bit of the tech there. It's a little mustard capsule that makes its way into the Tesseract energy conversion beam, kind of similar to how Iron Man's chess piece works. And then it is quantum tunneled out through the pole, down the shaft, and then eventually farted out of the torpedo cannon launcher. <laughs> So that's how it works, you just lodge this device right into your toilet's mouth, or as they call it in the plumbing business, the toilet's hole. Pull the trigger and it fires a f***ing missile down it. Now I know this product has a Japanese origin here, however this is the most American solution to any problem I've ever seen. Oh, what's the problem? Just shoot it. You know, toilet's clogged, and shoot it, it's that easy. Now I'm assuming the one they're using for the sinks here is a different kind of Mr. Pung, like a Mr. Younger Pung, because the shells they were using to shotgun blast the toilets were like 50 cal BMG rounds. I imagine the ones for the sink were significantly smaller, like a 9mm round. Mmm, <laughs> yummy. Toilet water. What's up everybody, it's Critical. Going through some shitty Kickstarter projects again. Here's the potato doctor. This needs no introduction. It's a doctor for your potato. As all of us know, there's three big medical fields. There's cardiology, there's neurology, and there's potatology. And this one is at the top of the food chain for that discipline. Let's dive in. We all love to eat. I'm gonna stop it right there for a second. That's a horrible start to your Kickstarter pitch. That is f***ing stupid. No shit. we all love to eat. Our species relies on food to survive. No one likes when you point out something every single human being in the world knows. It's just stupid. Ah, uh, it doesn't matter who you are, or where you're from, or what you've been through. Your sky is still blue. Go ahead and order this nutsack blanket. It's a blanket for your nutsack. So the tools that help us prepare our food are invaluable. There's a new food prep tool, the first of its kind. Introducing the Potato Doctor. It's a f***ing screwdriver. This looks like a rectal thermometer. The world's first food prep tool that creates magnificent loaded baked potatoes. With the help of the Potato Doctor, we will show you how to get from this, to this, and even this. Get to what? A picnic in the backyard with some friends while the baked potato looks all lonely and sad and shit in the corner? This looks like me during my freshman year of college at frat parties just hiding on my phone in the back corners hoping no one would see me and I was invisible. This isn't d displaying a cool potato at all, everyone's avoiding that potato. They're making fun of that potato over at the hot dog table over there. This potato just looks like a f***ing outcast. So you won't get this. That looks pretty damn good to me, but then again, what do I know? The baked potatoes I make can't afford healthcare, so they can't go to the potato doctor. Step 2. Mix your desired seasoning with a liquid. 
either milk, water, butter, or whatever the recipe requires. Pour the seasoning mixture in the bottle of the potato doctor. But why? Why wouldn't you just take those ingredients and put them in the potato? They'd be fresher and you wouldn't need to go through this extra step of including the potato doctor. Step 3. Use the potato doctor to inject, scramble, and mix the seasoning mixture into your baked potato. Yeah, then you just give your f***ing potatoes a rabies shot over here with your ingredients. The way she wiggles it around in there makes it look like some malpractice. What's the point? Is using a fork to mix it all around that difficult? JSW Products created the Potato Doctor because, first, the potato is one of the healthiest things on this planet. No, it's not. It contains no fat, nor does it contain cholesterol. That doesn't make it healthy. And I'm so f***ing tired of this stupid mentality that fat and cholesterol are bad for you, and if you see it in your food on the labels that you shouldn't eat it, it- I'm not gonna get into nutrition. Just know he's wrong. Fats are good for you, so are some cholesterols. And potatoes aren't that bad, but they're nowhere close to being the healthiest thing in the world a human being can consume. This innovative tool is the epitome of what JSW Products stands for. Well, that's sad. I'd be pretty embarrassed if my company was represented by a potato doctor. That the best thing my company could ever make and the thing that really represents my company and shows what we're all about is a f***ing needle that can help make your baked potatoes. The Potato Doctor is awesome. It's easy to use, works fast, and needs almost no cleanup. Bull****. You know what needs almost no cleanup? A f***ing fork. With the Potato Doctor, you have to take that mother apart and clean each and every nook and cranny of it. It's a needle. That's gonna be a real b to clean. A fork. That's pretty simple. You can receive the Potato Doctor, some Flava Monsters. Why are these called Flava Monsters? It's not an Xbox Live gamer tag, and you're not 12 years old. This is a company. Name them appropriately. That just sounds stupid and silly. The special mixing container, and much more. So please, fund the Potato Doctor campaign, and help us help you make life easier. I'm sorry to say, JSW, but the Potato Doctor makes the process much more complicated and much more of a headache. A, having to clean the damn thing, and B, actually using it. It's going to be much more of a hassle instead of just putting the ingredients in the potato and mixing it with a fork, as everyone has done for many years. There's nothing wrong with it. There's no reason to reinvent the potato or modernize it. It's fine, just as is. It's about as perfect as you can get. But yeah, really, just not a good product idea. And uh, that's it. So yeah. We're certainly living in the future these days where all of our products are considered smart products, meaning they all have to be connected online via Wi-Fi and you have to register them with a valid driver's license, fill out a survey, sign up for a newsletter. Got damn smart condoms coming next, I'm sure, where you have to be connected online at all times. Otherwise, the condom shuts down and it won't stretch so you can't use it. But this new revolutionary product is not a smart product. It will allow you to sit anywhere, but not comfortably. So this is a wearable chair. It just is two little legs that you put on your ass cheeks and you sit down, folds out, and then you kind of have to get into a pseudo squat to balance yourself. And it kind of looks like you're balancing on two pogo sticks, or they kind of look like the legs of a robot stripper, you know, like wearing fishnets. It could have at least made the legs kick out and look kind of cool, but it just looks really odd. They look like the roller blades from Alita Battle Angel. It looks like his asshole is dual wielding the 007 clobs. The design is an extension of your body. If your body is made out of PVC pipe and bubble gum, I suppose. This is also going to be the most uncomfortable bus ride of his life. He can't sit down wearing this. He's going to have to be standing. Though I suppose he could go full douchebag mode and just pop a squat in the middle of the aisle, giving the middle finger to everyone else on the bus. F you, I've got my go go gadget extendo ass cheek chair. Yeah, 265 max carrying capacity is just not going to cut it, not winning the Nobel Prize there. This seems like a product that would be aimed at people far in excess of 265 because it appears to make the assumption that everyone is just the laziest f 
slob who can't be bothered to stand for more than two minutes and the only people this would appeal to are people that get winded when they're standing for more than two minutes waiting for a bus and their knees are about to f explode but that clientele is going to weigh more than 265 so they can't even use this and at the end of the day there's places to sit everywhere in fact any place is a place to sit if you're willing to just pop a squat on it you know what i mean even on the ground is far more comfortable than this i imagine and also you're not locked into wearing the saw trap all day The creators also say it'll make your penis bigger. I can promise you this is not going to change how you use your workspace. No one's going to be using this. This will never catch on. But you know what? I'll toy around with the idea. I also think I can come up with a suggestion on how to change this workplace in particular. Why not just put a nice chair there? Why not just pull over a chair? What kind of damn sweatshop is this guy working in where he can't just pull over a chair that should already be there in the first place or readily available? Why does he have to come to work with these two aluminum sticks on his ass in order to sit down? This is just a job he might want to consider leaving. If you have to come to work wearing a strap-on just so you can sit down, it's probably not worth whatever you're getting paid to work there. one I agree this will change how they travel and how they commute because you won't be able to sit down on anything comfortable unless you take this thing off and then even then you have the inconvenience of carrying this shit around and making everyone around you think that you're a psychopath so yeah that will change the game for you but not positively almost every scam gets fully funded on Kickstarter a man making a potato salad crushed his Kickstarter goal this isn't a selling point. Just knowing it was on Kickstarter is enough to immediately make me question it and really kind of not want it. Kickstarter has such a negative reputation. <music> Tech Insider speculates that this wearable chair could change how we work and travel. And at $145, I promise you it never will. A. No one wants it. B. That's too expensive for this piece of sh**. And C. No one's going to commit social by walking around wearing this anywhere in the world. What's up everybody, it's Critical. I come before you today as a man, a very sad man, because another f***ing stupid Kickstarter project annihilated its funding goal and it's nothing more than overcomplicating a product for no reason and adding nothing more than a damn smartphone app to it. If you've been watching my videos where I sh** on Kickstarters for the last month or so, then this is the final boss of everything I've been sh** on. This is the unholy amalgamation of every possible complaint I've had over the last month with the f***ing horrible Kickstarters. The smart suitcase, introducing this pile of shit. Strike number one in the name alone. I know it's called the Samsara, but it also calls itself the world's first smart suitcase. That strikes one and two in the name alone. World's first, that trend needs to go away, it's dumb. No one gives a shit if it's the world's first if no one's been asking for it. It's like me saying, you know what, I invented the world's first toenail condom. It's a condom made out of toenails, it's the world's first. That means people must want it, right? No, no one wants a condom made out of toenails. It's nothing to be happy about that I created the world's first condom made out of toenails. And strike number two, smart. Putting smart in your product's name doesn't make it a better product. If anything, that just turns a lot of people off. It's like wearing a tap out t-shirt where you can identify a douchebag from across the room. Putting smart in front of your gadget's name just lets you identify a piece of shit. We created the first aluminum alloy smart suitcase. We live in a world of continuous movement. Creativity is everywhere. There's no creativity here. It's just a giant aluminum brick with a handle on it. This is something I could have made out of tin foil as a toddler. The only plus I can see to this design is it looks like you're carrying around a f nuclear football, so I guess that's kind of cool. And we are no longer limited by geographic boundaries. We developed a user-friendly mobile application. Oh, holy shit, a mobile app for something that stands to gain nothing from having a mobile app? Man, now that's the epitome of innovation. It's like having a mobile app for a pad of sticky notes. What's it going to tell me? Yep, sticky notes are still good to use. It's about it. And the suitcase is still working just fine. That connects to sensors within the suitcase. 
These sensors notify you if the suitcase leaves your presence. So the app can tell me when I'm not holding my suitcase. That's useful. I guess if you're blind, that would actually come in handy, but I'm pretty sure your seeing eye dog could do the same thing. And the seeing eye dog could probably do it better because it could lead you to the suitcase as opposed to just telling you, hey, you don't have it anymore. I don't know what Neanderthal and their team thought this was a good feature. They must just think their customers are the stupidest people in the world, like koala bears who can't recognize eucalyptus that's not on the tree. Same with their customers. If they're not licking the aluminum off of their suitcase, they forget it exists, so luckily the mobile app will remind them. I'm kind of on their side, though. I think their customers are probably the stupidest people, too, with how much money they've raised and thrown at this horrible idea of a Kickstarter. Or was opened out of eyesight. Our application will also allow you to control the LED light within the suitcase, which will assist you in the dark, and monitor the battery life powering your samsara. Now the anti-tampering thing, I can kind of see the merit in. If you're just too dumb to realize when someone's rummaged through your shit, I guess it's nice to have a reminder like, hey, someone opened this up and it wasn't you. The LED thing, what the f**k's the point? I don't think there's a whole lot of people who open up their suitcases in the bottom of a well. I'm pretty sure there's lights that they can turn on. They don't need LEDs to see their shit. And battery life monitoring, I mean, yeah, I guess that's kind of useful since this thing comes with a battery bank that's built in. That's basically all this whole thing is, is an aluminum suitcase with a battery bank and LEDs. So, I mean, monitoring battery life, I guess that's good. The hardware will enable you to charge your electronic devices via USB-C cable. It will also allow you to charge your mobile device up to 10 times. You know what else can let you do all of these things? Other products that are cheaper than this and aren't built in and constricted to an ugly suitcase. Our unique wheel design maximizes packing space and allows you to move effortlessly across any surface. Did they hire a robot to walk around with this suitcase here? This man's pathfinding like he's in RuneScape. It's like a f NPC in The Sims. And we ask you to join us for this exciting journey and support the creation of a new and better way to travel. And there you have it, it's the Samsara. With every successful Kickstarter, that's nothing more than overcomplicating an already simple and effective product and adding nothing to it except a mobile app. I get closer and closer to launching my own tungsten-coated mobile phone app compatible pair of underwear and put my own little pseudo-intellectual spin on it. The first smart undergarments and give it a cool little slogan. It's so smart, it's nuts. You see, it's like a play on being underwear because it's going to be holding the scrotum and shit. I think it's pretty clever. And then the mobile phone app will give it a little science-y spin on it that's nothing but pseudoscience. The app would tell you what the temperature is down there and then I'd come in with the fake science. According to Harvard Academia scientists and the top neurologist cryptozoologists in the world, 90% of all human diseases could have been prevented if we could have only effectively monitored our genital biomes. And thanks to this new smart underwear, we can. You'll be a healthier, happier person, your balance will improve because it'll increase your chakra pull to the Earth's gravitational core. Get your uh, smart pair of underwear for only 300 bucks a package. I'm gonna give them two or three just for a good value. And I think that'd actually probably be pretty successful. But yeah, that's it. See ya. What's up everybody, it's Critical. And I'm proud to finally be able to say, I can answer a question every pet owner asks themselves every day. Can I give my beloved pet some earphones so they can listen to some boner jams? Well, the answer is no, because for some unfathomable reason, this country did not want to fund the Kickstarter project for the very first set of pet earphones. I know, it's unbelievable. As dog whisperers have told us for years, Animals would love a set of Walkmans or some iPods just for them so they can listen to their favorite tunes as well. And these beats by Dr. Drehound for some reason just didn't get funded. But let's go ahead and look what if they did get funded. Let's see the Kickstarter pitch. Let's see how great these could have been. Oh, thank God they further simplified the menu. My pets were complaining about how difficult it was to navigate these bad boys, but thankfully they've listened to the feedback and they have made the menu simpler for my dogs. It sounds like a ransom video that the kidnappers would send to the family. Why is there no background music? This is just creepy. This is a very odd vibe you're sending out right now. This looks like the menu to an old Nextel phone. Come on, this is a 2017 product. Make it look like it. Holy sh- this is why it wasn't funded. Pets don't like the design. What are those? Barcodes? Serial numbers? What the f- 
This looks like a McDonald's Happy Meal toy from the early 80s. Well, unbelievable. How are the pets supposed to navigate through this and choose different artists? They're going to be stuck with one song, on, one song on loop for like 14 hours or however long I decide to keep this on them. Oh, what is he playing? Is this the Air Bud soundtrack? Oh, I can't wait. What kind of music does his dog like to listen to? Oh, it's Britney Spears? Yeah, oh great. Yeah, my, my animals also love to listen to modern pop music. I'm sure they'll be thrilled. Why does this plastic have so many options? Why wouldn't it just be music? If you want it to be a pet boner jam device, why wouldn't you just have music on it? Why do you need three separate menus? Is it internet compatible as well? My pets can check their social media accounts on them? Is one of the other menus an old Tamagotchi show? This thing looks like an awful boomerang that Captain Boomerang would use. That piece of shit superhero. Yep, that dog looks thrilled to have this on him. You know, I do know that a lot of animals respond positively to music, but I don't think they're begging for a portable music device. In fact, I think that would probably scare the shit out of them to have, to have constant music in their ears. But, how would I know? I can't talk to animals. I'd have to ask Eliza Thornbear if she could help me out here and get me a conclusive answer. But yeah, I'm just surprised this product wasn't funded with some of the shit that gets funded on Kickstarter. And I uh, can't wait to see the next step of pet music earphones. I'm sure they'll start to evolve and become pretty commonplace eventually. But yeah, that's it. So yeah. Your ass clitor eye, I'm not quite sure the plural. But anyway, you don't take my word for it. Check this shit out. Let's blast some big old boner jams with no wires and no plugs and no hands because I, let me call, I gotta call my girl real quick. Hey Sully, it's Carla. I need you over at the studio for a production meeting. Carla, I'm busy. I'll pop my dick in your mouth later, alright? Can you just wait a minute? Okay. I'm not going to that production meeting. Listen here, assholes. Uh, you're losing money not buying the Jupiter Jack, honestly. I, I'm gonna change the name from the Jupiter Jack to the Jupiter Jack Off. Because you're gonna be jacking off with this hands-free phone system. You're gonna have both hands free, might as well put them both on the dick. You know what I'm saying, boys and girls? This is the Jupiter Jack. I'm Anthony Sullivan. What more do you want me to say? What, you want to fight about it? It's no secret the world is a divided place. Not everyone can agree on the same things. That is, until early 2017 when a product known as Ju Globe came together and in one unified voice said, What a piece of sh**. It's been two years since the common enemy Juicero was defeated. Two years since I made the video talking about the Juicero. I also made a follow-up with the creator, what he's doing, how he's poisoning himself and others with raw, untreated water. So basically, he's just a cholera dealer. He just distributes that to dumb people across the world. But what I haven't touched on is the products that aim to mimic what the Juicero did. Today, we'll be talking about the cleanest, which is a Juicero for soap. Cleanest, a revolutionary system for mixing your favorite products with an easy-to-use appliance, concentrated ingredients, and reusable bottles. For those of you that aren't familiar with the Juicero who didn't achieve enlightenment in 2017 with the product, I'll go ahead and put it in a little nutshell for you, a tight little nutsack. The Juicero was basically pre-packaged things of juice and a giant $400 machine that would slowly squeeze the juice into a cup underneath. But all you needed to do was just squeeze the packets yourself to get the juice out because it was literally just juice in a bag that would have squeezed through a small opening. It was really f***ing stupid. And that's exactly what the cleanest is with a couple extra bells and whistles and it probably tastes better than the juice Juicero shipped with. Just add water from your own tap and at the press of a button, you mix up products that are better for you and better for the planet. Why? Because you make them yourself with naturally derived ingredients in these beautiful reusable bottles that will eliminate hundreds of single-use bottles and help shrink your carbon footprint. Basically what you're paying for is a machine that squirts water and prepackaged soap into a bottle and it stirs it underneath. It also gives you the ability for some DLC, some f***ing EA loot box style fragrances that you can buy for extra and squirt into your soap to make it feel like you did a little more with the soap making process than just press a button and have water squirt with your soap. It's a remarkably useless tool because you're just buying pre-packaged soap and having it stir it for you. There's nothing that would stop you from buying that soap, putting it in a bottle yourself, and then pouring hot water in and shaking it by hand like a f***ing caveman. But the creators of the cleanest thought of that, they said there's no way the human touch could possibly get the correct viscosity when it comes to mixing these together. As if that really f***ing matters considering it's just soap and water getting mixed by a little fan. Looks like just one of those fans children would walk around an amusement park with to squirt themselves with water and blast a little air in their face. It's not exactly the most heavy duty industrial fan or stirring procedures. It's not that complex, it's just useless.
And the coolest part is that you save money because we're only shipping necessary ingredients in minimal packaging. No, I don't mean to cut you off, but I'll tell you the coolest part. If you pledge five dollars to this Kickstarter, you get nothing. You get absolutely f***ing nothing. Also, spoiler alert, I don't believe you would save money using this product. The packages that you have to buy individually come at three to six dollars and they don't give you a whole lot of bang for your buck. They give you like two tiddly winks worth of soap, which would last you maybe a week. As opposed to the kegs that you can buy at Walmart and Costco full of dish soap. More dish soap than you could ever imagine. More dish soap than God planned to exist. Ingredients pouches are delivered directly to your door. You load them into the appliance along with an empty bottle. Select the mix type and cleanest does the rest. In two to three minutes, you will have a perfectly mixed product that is ready to use and guaranteed to work. Who gets this excited about soap? Look at this guy. He's full of just straight jubilation. He looks happier than hearing impaired children getting hearing aids for the first time. He is loving this f***ing soap. We launch with a complete line of 10 everyday products. Even thick ones you probably never thought could be easily mixed at home. All products will be available in either free and clear or naturally scented with botanical extracts and oils. If you're feeling creative, you can even personalize the free and clear concentrates to mix your own scent creations. That's right, baby. Be your own chemist. The sky is the limit. There's no end to the creative flavor combinations you can create with these fragrances. Only if you're using our fragrances, though. But I swear to God, if you're using some other fragrances that aren't ours, it will turn this soap into hydrochloric acid. It will just straight up explode if you drop any other fragrances, a third-party fragrance, into our cleanest soap mixture. Yeah, no, you're going to be using our products, or else you're going to pay the ultimate price. Cleanest was co-founded by three brothers who spent most of their careers on the inside of the packaging and ingredients industries. Holy sh**, the Gunnia family is behind this? Well, now I'm sold. My goodness, I have to buy it now with these three brothers. Now, I'm sure you don't need me to whip out the ruler like a Catholic school teacher on the desk and tell you exactly why this is a bad product. I think it's pretty clear to most people why this is useless. But I'm going to go a step further into something you probably didn't think about when watching this. This harps on being very good for the environment, very green, but I'd argue quite the opposite. This is far worse for the environment than going to a store and buying your soap. And it's not only because you're paying over $100 for this overpriced piece of plastic that doesn't do anything more than mix water and prepackaged soap for you. The problem, the main problem, is their idea where everything is reusable, but it's used through the mail. So you get your pouches mailed to you, use them, and send them back through the mail. Do you see what I'm saying here? That's a lot of f***ing gas getting that to and from your place of residence. Plus, since you're not getting a whole lot of soap, you're going to be doing this a lot, as opposed to just going to the store and getting a giant f***ing oil drum full of soap that'll last you far longer than these pouches will. It costs the environment a lot less in the long run. I won't lie and say I'm shocked that this got more than double its funding. This is the exact kind of trendy sh that people love, you know, oh, I'm gonna make my own soap by squeezing two rocks together and then dumping a little bit of basil leaf in there. Oh, that's gonna be the perfect soap. It's gonna be great. I understand why something like this would catch fire in certain communities, but it is not a green product. It's not a useful product. This is just a sh product that emulates what the Juicero did, but for a different market. And we all saw what the Juicero was, a waste of time. And that's the exact same with the cleanest. That's it. So yeah. Since the primordial soup that gave life to all on this planet, since the earliest human settlers of Earth, we've asked one another, do you love memes? Do you love food? And for the longest time, there was never a holy place that combined these two human necessities into one convenient package until now. Welcome to heaven. If you haven't puked yet, then you've likely entered a state of euphoria, similar to when Aang goes into the Avatar state, except this one is triggered by memes. This is similar to a Rorschach test more than anything. What do these stale, dank memes mean to you? When I see them, I think of social ineptitude. I think of nothing but pain and suffering. But some of you out there may see them and think, damn, that makes me hungry. I wish there was food structured around shit like this. I'm gonna have to put the brakes on this wild bull here. What the f 
do you mean by humor appreciators? That's one of the dumbest terms I've seen being tossed around in quite some time. It sounds like a failed job position, just a made up one that somebody would use to get their family off their back and make them think they're at least doing something and have an accomplished title. Oh, what do you do, Richard? Well, I'm the chief humor appreciator at Google. Pretty prestigious position if I do say so myself. Yeah, you know, when I think of humor appreciator meme enthusiasts, I typically think of middle-aged elderly men in business attire. Also, I, I have to disagree. I don't think even that boring guy at the party can become popular by sharing meme videos for the whole party. I don't see that going over very well in the real world. Memes just aren't used exclusively for the geeks and the humor appreciators, as you like to title them. It's pretty mainstream. Most people are familiar with popular memes and such. It's not like this underground thing. Also, why? Because we can? Well, clearly not. You can't do this because you're on Kickstarter asking for $350,000 to bring this abysmal idea to life. And you didn't even have the decency, the courtesy, you, you don't even know the way to good Patri or, uh, Kickstarter rewards here. There's three tiers and the lowest one is $5,000. You gotta be f***ing kidding me. Uh, epic Rage. Wow. Now if this menu doesn't make you want to eat there, I just don't know what will. They have everything an eight-year-old boy could ever want. They got spaghetti, they got burgers, they got uh, onion rings, man. They've got it all. And this is just the mock-up. This isn't even its final form. I can't wait for the full menu to be released. They'll have so much more sh They'll probably have some super cool sh like the Damn Daniel, which will be a honey mustard salmon hot dog. The what are risottos, which will be a ri risotto. The possibilities are truly endless. A juice bar and tablets for internet surfing? You'll never want to leave. They've got everything. This place really is just all over the place. They don't know what they want to be here. They just looked at every restaurant that's successful and they put all of it under this feces covered umbrella of memes being the glue that holds it all together. And it's a horrible idea. Holy lord, forgive my tits for I have sinned. I actually thought this was a bad idea until they gave me the examples of some of the things I could find there. Sign me the f*** up. 5,000, I'm in. Meme of the month, huh? Well, not all memes are as PG as the ones you're using at your restaurant, so I can't see that going over super well. I also really love how when they do the visual representation of, is this a joke, they use a happy man smiling with thumbs up like, yeah, it's a good joke. And when they say, no, no, it isn't, he turns into this sad looking guy, he's like, huh, thinking about it, huh, seems like a really shit idea. I skipped a little bit there, but all it was is, how can you help? Give us money. That's the whole thing there that I skipped. I also really like this here. Even one dollar helps? No, you clearly don't care about the one dollar people. You don't even get out of bed for the one dollar people. You wouldn't piss in their mouth if they were dying of thirst if they gave you a dollar. You only have tears for five thousand and above, so how can anyone think, you know, anything less than that will be worth their while? I won't be doing that. I'd lose friends sending them this. 
I won't be sending it to them either. I'd lose families sending them this. And that's the whole pitch here. I'm sure you've all been sold on the idea and are eager to help them reach the $350,000 mark. Uh, that's it. See ya. Do you often find yourself daydreaming about old cleaning products while a mannequin looks at a TV? Does your oven smell like old soggy anus? What about sh Is there shit on your stove? Well, no more. Now you can erase that sh thanks to our new all-natural, non-toxic, biodegradable Dutch cleaner. You've heard of the Dutch oven, now meet the cleaning product. You got a piece of the Mercury Atlas 7 spacecraft you want to clean? Use the Dutch cleaner. Got some blood on the countertop? Use the Dutch cleaner. Takes it right off. No evidence. Just realize it's called the Dutch Glow, not the Dutch Cleaner. Doesn't matter. Same thing. We're cleaning shit with Dutch liquids. Look at this fucking science experiment. Incoming spatula. But don't worry, no job's too big for the Dutch Glow. Goodbye, bubbly chocolate monster. I think Rene Descartes said it best when he said, I Dutch glow, therefore I am. This plate was once dirty, and now it's only half dirty. Here's the fucking science behind the thing. On the left, there's some boring water and oil, but look at the party on the right. Look how exciting that is. You see, the Dutch glow gets in there on the subatomic carbohydrate level, and the biceps femoris muscle works together with the right atrium of the heart, and clean things happen. Look at this. This lady found this on the street and just starts cleaning it. Why not? Look at this. This is dirty, too. Can clean it why not buckle up for a surprise because this cheese grater bleeds now they feel bad for it don't you well you shouldn't because it's been dutch glowed therefore it's happy with the dutch glow you'll be cleaning all types of the dutch way ordinarily these things cost money and the dutch glow costs money too asshole. but you're gonna be getting your money's worth with this product and it's at a very reasonable price it's only 14.99 14.99 you get some high quality dutch fluids why wouldn't you want to do that go ahead and just call right now and buy this shit. I don't even care what the f*** you do with it. Use it as mouthwash. Substitute it for milk in your cereal bowl. It really doesn't matter. Just go ahead and buy this. You know what? If you buy this, I'm going to double size it. That is two times the Dutch cleaning fluids. It, why wouldn't you want that? And you know what? Call right now, and I'll go ahead and throw in this f***ed up slinky I found in the dumpster outside. It's great. You can go ahead and use it for whatever you want to use it for. You can pull it. You can stretch it. You can yourself with it it really doesn't matter to me all that matters to me is that you get yourself a very high quality dutch cleaning product did i mention this bundle of hair is absolutely free why wouldn't you want that with this bonus offer it looks like something you find in the men in black headquarters it's a really cool product everything here is just some really good shit. and did i mention that two of these bottles can make up to 16 bottles of windex and i'm throwing in this entire pile of 10 man's pubic hair it's a great deal go ahead and call now hello and welcome to solitary confinement you might recognize this area when squidward wanted to be all alone i'm ruth gluten reverse santa claus I steal all this from kids every Christmas, but I keep running out of space. Luckily, the Lord has answered my prayers and has given me the space bag storage packs. And now you too can experience one of the Lord's greatest gifts to mankind since the erection. This high capacity condom can store up to four times more useless sh than its competitors. Your wife left you and you quit your job to pursue Minecraft Let's Plays to put food on the table. It's not working, you've lost control of your life, but at least you can control the clutter with space bags. Just pack your items, seal the airtight zipper, plug in any vacuum hose, and flip flopper panty dropper. It's now been shrunken down to the size of one of Shaq's kidney stones. You want to grow a tree on top of it? Go wild. Grow that tree. It's not going to penetrate the four layers of protection. We've used the finest tracing paper we could find and then put more tracing paper on top of it. Dirt, bugs, and moisture don't stand a chance. Look at this bad boy. Clean as a baby's taint. Whoops a daisy, camera cut. Go to a different shot with a clean jacket that wasn't even in the bag that got the diarrhea shower a second ago. Hope you're stupid enough not to have picked up on that. This is a real life shrinking ray, ladies and gentlemen. Is your dirty clothes talking shit to you? Take them down to size with the space bags. Flat bags also work too. Compress your clothes into some type of mosaic here. Is your car taking up too much space in the driveway? Go ahead and throw that bitch into a space bag. It'll shrink it. Roger Eber raves it's a smart solution for cramped closets. It started out this big, but ended up being this big when I was done. Look at this shit. This is clothes, and now it's over here. But now it's back in my hand like magic. But magic is the work of Satan. It's time you take control and space brag to your friends about all the space you're saving by using these space bags. We'll send you one jumbo cube, two large cubes, and two medium fries for only $19.95, so go ahead and call now, assholes. It's a space race to see who's gonna be the first one to capitalize on this out-of-this-world deal. Does your dog not speak English? Does your dog try and escape your poor ownership? Yes! No! What's a dog? No more using Jigsaw's rejected contraptions. I'm sorry we can't help you if you're weak as and get pulled by your dog, but we have a product to be used by everyone of all strength levels. It's the Quit It, the air horn for your dog. Just sneak up behind your pet Sam Fisher style and scare the f*** out of them, guaranteed to terrify them. This product is vegan friendly and organic. It uses only canned natural instincts. No artificial instincts in this bitch. Just real fresh instincts. Does your dog want to help you put your shoes on? Scare him away from that. Here's a cobra. That's scary as sh but not scarier than the Quit It. 
The Quidditch sends infrared signals to the dog's brain, triggering their self-destruct mechanism. Did you have a nightmare? Go ahead and spray the Quidditch to scare away the bad dream demons. Is your cat chewing on your poison ivy? Go ahead and save its life. Please, somebody, anybody, I need help. My name is Tinkle Ballsniff. I'm being held hostage at one- Hello, I'm an actress playing a veterinarian. I, uh, touched an animal once. It was a bulldog. I, I think it- I think that's what it's called. Look at this f***ing steak. Now look at your f***ing self. Are you actually training your pets? Quit it. Buy this can of sh What's up everybody, it's Critical. I made a joke in the Juicero video I made a little while back about Wi-Fi enabled shoes. The joke served to illustrate the point of not everything needs to be connected to the internet because it's kind of f***ing stupid to connect everything to the internet for no reason. And then one of you out there must have heard that joke and thought of it as a legitimate business idea. Because now, there is Wi-Fi enabled shoes. Introducing the smart shoe, aka the shit shoe. Somehow this horrendous idea for a product actually got funded, even overfunded with a lot of days to go on its campaign. So to the CEO of this company, I, I believe you owe me at least 30% of the profits here considering this was my idea. There it is, the next generation of Heelys. This little transformer for your foot certainly looks really cool. I wonder what would happen if it malfunctioned and just kept pressing down? Would it just hydraulic press your foot into a pancake? Now admittedly, I see the value of an activity tracker. But you don't need a special pair of shitty looking shoes that are connected via a phone app to tell you what you've been doing. There's a lot of other products out there right now that make a lot more sense and aren't quite as stupid. Cushion monitoring. Who gives a f What is that 97%? 97% cushioning? What the f does that even mean? 97% of your foot in that shoe is on the cushion, the other 3% is just being dragged through broken f***ing glass? I don't get it, I've never heard the term cushion monitoring. When buying a mattress, I don't ask what percentage of cushion this has. Oh, that chair looks mighty fine. What's its cushion percentage? What does that stupid graph on his phone even tell him? It just looks like the Bitcoin prices by hour. A walk analyzer. You've got me f***ed up. A strike pattern down there too? Alright, calm down there, Dr. Scholes. This is supposed to be a shoe app, not a f***ing golfing tutor. Just more stupid, useless sh**. Walk 50% faster to be on time. An AI audio coach. Yep, that's what I've always wanted my shoes to become. I wanted them to be my f***ing personal trainer. Your d*** is small and you'll never find love with a walk pattern like this. Disgraceful f*** you, I'm turning myself off. Heated soles because f socks, unless those socks are also Wi-Fi enabled and controlled via app. These shoes make a lot of bold claims here that'll be all of these things. Oh, it'll be a calculator, it can double as a protein shaker, it'll do your homework for you too. Oh, it can do everything you ever wanted it to do. Open heart surgery, just take out your digital smart shoes, it'll walk you through it with the AI audio coach. I would be highly surprised if it was able to do even half of the shit it says it can do here. Also, what about hackers? What about the anonymous 4chan, the infamous hackers? What if they get into my shoes data? They could probably get my bank account information from my digital smart shoes. What if they even take it to a more nefarious purpose? What if I'm exploring in the woods and I come across some train tracks and some hackers play a prank on me for some YouTube views where they shut down my shoes while I'm on the train tracks, then I can't move. My shoes just become like fucking cement blocks that I just can't move because they've shut them down. They've cut the signal. Then I'm just left on those train tracks helpless, about to be obliterated by a train. More bold claims I don't believe they'll be able to follow through on, especially the temperature controlled sh**. Modern technology can't even do that at the moment, I don't believe. But according to this marketing campaign, these shoes can do everything shy of making girls just throw their titties at you. Did we mention you have to charge these mother 
Who gives a shit if the battery life lasts two weeks? Do you know how long a normal battery life in a standard pair of shoes lasts? Forever, because there's no f***ing batteries in shoes. You don't have to charge shoes overnight. This would just be an absolute disaster. I'd wake up in the morning and remember I didn't charge my shoes? Well, I guess I just am not wearing shoes for that day, huh? What would happen if it rained, too? Would you just get electrocuted by these shoes? I just don't understand. It doesn't cover these things. I imagine there's some type of watertight thing in here, but wouldn't that throw off some of the data? I think that would really throw off the numbers here and they wouldn't be very accurate or even come in at all, especially with all the data it's saying it's collecting. It collects everything from the number of steps you take throughout the day to how long your nutsack hair has grown in the last two hours. Don't let the name deceive you, there's nothing smart about buying this pair of shoe. But what do I know, already $87,000 from people who think it's a good idea? So maybe I'm just wrong, maybe they will be able to do all the things they say it can do in this video and more. Perhaps they'll include a DLC or a new patch or a subscription service that'll monitor the amount of methane being emitted around you. All in all, I just think this is perhaps one of the stupidest ideas that has been funded. And not just funded, like barely, landslide funded, people are begging for this apparently judging by these numbers it's unbelievable to me that anyone would watch this and think a yeah that's possible and b yeah that's a good idea but yeah whatever that's it so yeah do you suck at cooking do you constantly ruin the thanksgiving turkey for everyone and disappoint your children and make them despise you i'm master chef paul blart here with the turbo roaster just give your turkey a prostate exam with this pirate's hook and you'll have a beautiful thanksgiving meal in no time for the whole family to enjoy Perfect for every occasion, perfect for every masturbation, cooks in 45 minutes, comes in 30. This piece of shit that looks like half a question mark has vapor infusion that delivers heat and moisture right into the heart of the turkey. Damn near brings it back to life. Cooks quickly without drying it out, but watch this. You add liquid, and you put that bad boy in, and you're having a good time. Right up in that G-spot, roast for 45 minutes, insult everything about that turkey, make him feel real bad, make him tougher for it, prepared in half the time that a National Football League game takes to complete, assuming no overtime, of course. Now let's compare these two chickens here. We have a turbo-roasted chicken over here, and a non-turbo-roasted chicken, a turbo sh chicken. Here's the regular chicken. Just look how awful that looks. It looks like a baby's taint. No one wants that. Check out this turbo-roasted chicken, though. Now, that looks scrumptious. No longer will you be the family's disappointment. Now, you will be giving them some great meals in only 45 minutes thanks to the turbo-roaster. Just put that piece of shit in there. It used to take five hours. Now it's taking two hours, and it's stuffed. I've been plugging that shit with my dick all morning. Look at how great that looks. Yum, yum, yum. So don't be shy, order a turbo-roaster from your favorite turbo-broaster. What's up, everybody? It's Critical. How many of you wish that your iPhone charger was a little bit sexier? If you're anything like me, you're disappointed every time you plug in your phone to charge it because it's just so boring and standard and generic. It's not hot at all. It's too small to go into my asshole and it's too big to go into my urethra. So what am I going to do with it besides just regularly charge my phone, which is just not sexy? Well, finally, there's a solution to that problem. It's called Paul. And it was a Kickstarter project that I just cannot believe was not successfully funded. And I'm going to say it's probably the name. I think Paul is a pretty stupid name for a sexy product like this. I would have given it a much cooler name, like Titanius Thorgor. Now let's just check out the pitch. Here it is, it's Paul, the half a mannequin torso people have been begging for for years. I too like to caress the chest of mannequins as well as wipe their ass crack with my finger. Finally, I can have a statue at home I can not only molest, but I can also charge my phone on. We live in a world where the number of Facebook friends you have and the elegance of your- Oh yeah, nothing gets my engine fired up quite like girls blowing on charging ports. Mmm, yum. Selfies determine the quality of your mate. In this type of environment, it has become important to own really sexy technology. Ugh, so hot! Licking phone screen! Ugh! I don't get his f***ing idea here. It's important to have sexy technology because it's important we post selfies on the internet. Why does the technology have to be sexy? If I'm a big tittied sexy girl who wants to post a sexy picture online, I don't need a slick sexy piece of technology to do it. 
I can take the picture with a rusty toilet paper roll that happens to have camera functionality and it would just be the same. It would be the same result. Meet Paul. Hi, right, Paul. Paul is the sexiest smartphone charger on the planet. Hi, I'm Justin, father of Paul. I created Paul because I wanted my technology to do more than just represent my sexuality. I want my technology to literally be sexy. Yeah, nothing says sexy like Paul shitting out a charging cord wire. Oh yeah, that's great stuff, just pulling the small intestine out of his anus. Why do you need your technology to be expressive of your sexuality? What's the point? I like fettuccine alfredo, but I don't expect my technology to look or taste like fettuccine alfredo. It's just stupid. Why would it? What's the point? This versatile design object doubles as a beautiful piece of classical art. It is a fantastic conversation object and can inspire creativity in the work. Yep, that looks good to me. Just yanking a dingleberry out of his rectum here. Wow, that's that's great looking. I don't understand what he means by inspire creativity in the workplace. I, I don't exactly imagine a future where these are mandated by companies. Uh, excuse me, employees, if you need to charge your phones, we have a room dedicated to some Paul outlets over there. They help inspire creativity. Feel free to use them at any point throughout the workday. And I don't think they'd see their productivity jump up 20% per quarter. Paul is more than just a fun way to charge your smartphone. This project is about exploring mobile technology's effect on human sexuality. I need your help to move past the prototype phase and to do the first small production run of Paul. I'm really excited about this project, and I know that Paul will love it in your home. Adopt a Paul of your own by backing this project today. Thanks, Kickstarters. Yeah, she's just square dancing with the Paul. How many of us dance with mannequins? Let's be honest here. Pretty much everyone's done it at some point. Really don't understand the point of this project, but uh, you know, I'm sure there was a market for it. I'm sure there still is, and I'm sure it will eventually get tapped into at some point. But yeah. So, yeah. Good afternoon, viewer. You're watching the Face Trainer Basic Training Instructional Video brought to you by Radiancy and No No. It's in the game. I'm your host. This device is what you get when beauty and diarrhea amalgamate. Before you begin your abstract expedition through the human psyche using the Face Trainer, you must first learn the basic steps. The first step is learning the surprise puppy dog technique. This move is integral to the face trainer. Simply open your mouth as though you'll be bobbing for apples shortly, then look straight up into the sky. The final product should look as though you've just been hit by a phaser. Now that you've mastered the basics, it's time to move on to some advanced training, so strap in, you son of a bitch. Now listen, just because you paid $200 for this poorly designed Power Rangers helmet doesn't mean you're entitled to a good face training. You need to put that work in. If you don't put that work in, the only thing you're training is my patience. I'm not gonna shit here and listen to your piss at the toilet seat. The under eye, smoother. Once you're wearing the face trainer and are thoroughly embarrassed, you can begin by putting your fingers in this position. Think of it as though you're about to use the solar flare attack from Dragon Ball Z. Then initiate the surprise puppy dog technique. These two working in cahoots are guaranteed to drastically reduce your self-esteem. Isn't that wonderful? Let's have a recap of what the f you just witnessed. You saw the surprised puppy dog, fingers in place, head back, bring lower lid up. I believe that's supposed to be lip, must be a typo. Whoopsie. And the puppy dog face. The puppy dog face is not to be confused with the surprised puppy dog. As I'm sure you're well aware, those are two entirely different emotions. You can go f yourself if you think they're similar. This is a human face without skin. The smile line smoother. Start by going into your surprise puppy dog stance, then put your finger under your nose and in front of your lips. You should look like you're telling a noisy giant to please be quiet while he's in the library because you're trying to read. Then give your finger a little old smooch. This exercise targets both your willpower and your will to live. This is the ultimate form of endurance and should be just what you need to get that perfect facial training. I'm still here. As you watch this gentleman practice the smile line smoothing technique, I'd like to share a few testimonials with you from our happy customers. The first one. This is sh I like sh Therefore, I like this. That one's from me. Here's another. If I could only take one article of clothing to a club, I'd take this. Because then I could wander into the women's bathroom, pretend to be a toilet seat, and have a bunch of women sit on my face. That one is also from me, and that's all the testimonials we have. Skinless face again, folks. The chin and neck toner. Now that you realize purchasing the face trainer was probably a mistake, it's time to punish yourself for it. 
Put your hands in a position that simulates strangling yourself, then look up to the sky and perform a series of complex ululations. If you have managed to survive the chin and neck toning procedure, then congratulations. You have f***ing trained your platysma. You gave that a workout. And you've trained your sternocleidomastoids, also known as the neck titties. The eye opener and forehead smoother. This is the most difficult technique because for this you have to read the mind of an alien. This is no easy task, I can assure you of that. Now, as you can see, she was unsuccessful in contacting extraterrestrial beings on that attempt. However, this does not daunt her. She still gives it a try. And you should too. You should try the face trainer now. Train your face, train your senses, train your ass cheeks. Use it as a Halloween costume and say you're a Ninja Turtle. I don't f***ing care. Just order this. You could be sitting there not training your shit, Or you could put this bitch on and train the f*** out of your shit. Pick your phone up right now and call the face training yippee 800 number and order this the balls in your court so what are you gonna do are you gonna ride the train that takes you to work or are you gonna ride the train that takes your face to work ordinarily when it comes to anthony sullivan commercials i dub over mr anthony the sex master sullivan but for this one i'm so utterly confused on the purpose of this device that i can't help but want to insult it so, please join me as we watch the commercial and I try and convince you not to buy the Hurricane Spin Broom. And I know all of you are really f***ing eager to put this one in the Christmas stockings this year for 2019. I absolutely know there's more hype around the Hurricane Spin Broom than there is around AirPods these days. But for real, let me just go ahead and point out some shit about this piece of shit. Hi, Anthony Sullivan here for the Hurricane Spin Broom, the lightweight, easy to use, cordless sweeper. First thing I'd like to point out is look at the design of this. It actually looks like someone bending over. It looks like two ass cheeks and everything it picks up goes into the ass hole. Let me give you a drawing as a side-by-side -side comparison to help you visualize what I mean. Now look at the Hurricane Spin Broom and then look at the ass that I've drawn here. Can you even spot the differences? So the hole on my drawing is where the hurricane spin broom it takes in its debris, takes in everything on the floor. It picks up practically everything. It weighs less than two pounds. Who cares if it weighs less than two pounds? It's not like modern vacuum cleaners are like Thor's hammer where only the chosen one can pick it up. Pounds. And its rotating bristles clean like a street sweeper. It gobbles up everything in its path. Yeah, I guess it's great for these large objects on the floor due to its gaping mob hole containment facility that it, the bristles sweep it into. But that's super useless because no one's going to take a bite out of their donut, get all f***ing slippery fingered and drop it on the floor and then just all of a sudden gasp. <gasps> oh, this looks like a job for my hurricane spin broom. I'll be right back. You know, go upstairs, get the spin broom, come back downstairs, get it up with the spin broom, then go empty out the spin broom. You pick up the f***ing half eaten donut with your hands. It's far more efficient and it's far quicker. No one would ever go out of their way to use the spin broom for this job, especially considering how small the spin broom is. You'd pick up this donut and it'd immediately be full, so you'd have to go empty it anyway. It's just a waste of time, extra steps. Use it for dry food, wet food, pet hair, or tough sticky rice. It even sweeps slippery ice. It's so light, I can pick up a mess using my pinky. Yeehaw. Wow, that'd be such a cool stunt you bring over your friends. Guys, look at this shit. I'm gonna dump out some gummy bears on the floor and then watch this. With one pinky going freestyle mode here, bang, spin broom that bitch up. You, are you impressed with my magic trick yet? Please clap. The secret's the triple brush technology that uses centrifugal force combined with the rotating action to sweep up everything in its path. Just push to empty in the trash, your hands never touch the mess. And the Yeah, huge dustbin and it advertises this by showing it dumping out half a shot glass worth of Fruit Loops. The dustpan on this shit is laughably small. You could pick up maybe three pencil erasers and it'd reach full capacity and you'd have to empty it out. That's totally f useless you are better off using a vacuum it's just as easy for the most part and you get a whole lot more bang for your f you get to fill up so much more without having to constantly go to the garbage can and empty the shit out this is totally useless spin broom has a mega mouth that's big enough to pick up a ham sandwich look at that and then you'll immediately have to go empty it because the spin broom reaches max level and can't hold any more shit. And I highly doubt that this is a legitimate test here. I don't think that the little hurricane spin broom prison cell that it has there could hold anything more than two tiddlywinks worth of rice. 
Let alone an entire ham sandwich. Plus, it stores practically anywhere. Yeah, that's when you know your goose is cooked and you're out of compliments to give a product when you say you can store it anywhere. You know what else you can store anywhere? A vacuum. There is nothing that's preventing this woman from putting a vacuum in there. It's not like the universe would stop her with some type of invisible f***ing wall like it's a video game. Vacuums are heavy, and the old way is back-breaking work. And stop chasing around the line from a dustpan and broom. Call now to get the original Hurricane Spin Broom for just $19.99. I won't be doing that, but I'm not your dad, so if you thought the Spin Broom looked pretty f***ing swell, please, by all means, go for it. I actually saw this on the subreddit, someone posted it, and I just got so caught off guard by how bad this product was, and it made me upset to see Anthony Sullivan selling it, that I just felt compelled to shit on it and point out some things that I just don't get about it. So yeah, that's it, and I'm disappointed in you, Anthony Sullivan, I really am. So yeah. What's up, everybody? It's Critical. I usually don't like to make anything on any Indiegogo projects because most of the projects on this site are the most unrealistic, putrid, putrescent piles of shit in existence that will never be completed or just blatant scams i truly believe indiegogo is the most despicable deplorable crowdfunding website in existence however this greasy ass stain of a product is something i couldn't ignore it's called smalt it's a mother smart salt shaker i thought we'd hit the ceiling with stupid smart products being crowdfunded with the smart shoes and the smart suitcase however it looks like we've gone one step further here Meet Smalt, the world's first interactive centerpiece that enhances your dining experience. Smalt has a sleek and portable design. So this glowing pregnancy test of an item is the Smalt. Who gives a f if it's sleek and portable? I'm not going to be taking my salt shaker anywhere. I'm not going to go to a restaurant and just replace their salt shakers with mine. Ugh, these low-class Cro-Magnon aren't even using smart salt shakers. Where's my Smalt? Boof. Ah, oh, much better. Now I can safely use my salt from my smartphone. Features a built-in mood light to set the ambience, a Bluetooth speaker that delivers a crisp and powerful sound, and it's a smart salt dispenser. Shake, pinch, or pour, all using your smartphone. Or, you know, shake, pinch, and pour using your hand and a standard salt shaker. A salt shaker exists for one thing. Hold salt and release salt when, when you want it. Why does it need anything else? It's going to be a shitty speaker. It's going to be a sh** mood lighting, it's going to be sh** everything, and now it's becoming a sh** salt shaker because now you have to go through the hoops of using your smartphone to access the salt. Smalt comes with Amazon Alexa integration for the times you need an extra hand. Simply say, Alexa, dispense half a teaspoon of salt. So it drops the salt into a small condom that you still have to pour yourself. So basically this giant tampon serves no purpose because ultimately you're still pouring the salt yourself. Yes, if it works perfectly as advertised and you tell it how much you want and it gives you exactly how much you ask for, that's cool. But you know what's even cooler? Not spending the extra money on this stupid looking device and just pouring the exact amount you want yourself from a standard salt shaker. You can also track and monitor your sodium with the Smalt app. Gargle fat smegma, no you can't. What it can do is monitor your sodium levels just from what you've got from your smalt shaker. Won't take into account whatever you're pouring the smalt onto. Whatever sodium contents in there will not be involved in the calculations here. So your sodium level obviously won't be accurately reflected on the smartphone app. That's just a deceptive marketing tool by saying that. Smalt's easily portable design makes it an on-the-go centerpiece no matter where you dine. Pair your phone with Smalt to stream your favorite music, and let the entertainment begin. Oh yeah, I'm sure a lot of people are just begging to take their salt shakers with them where they go to dine, but they're just so embarrassed by the bad design. You find me five people that say they wish they could take a salt shaker that looked cool with them to where they dine, and I'll find you five liars. Also, check out the speaker here. Yeah, that looks like it's going to deliver a high-quality audio experience. It's like a spider bite on the side of this thing. There's no way that's going to sound decent. I'm almost certain it'll make it sound like your songs are being broadcast through a 1940s ham radio. Let Smalt be the conversation piece of your dinner party. If I ever host a dinner party that's so damn boring that people start talking about my salt shakers, just f***ing shoot me. Open your Smalt app and simply pinch the screen or shake your phone to dispense salt. After all, Smalt is a smart salt dispenser. 
I like how they try to make this seem like it's convenient. Oh, just simply pinch your smartphone to dispense the salt. Oh, you know it's even more easy and convenient than that? How about you just pour the f***ing salt? I can already imagine how this will go at a dinner party. Alright, can you pass the salt? Yeah, hold on, I'm gonna pinch it real quick. Alright, go ahead and grab it. Yeah, it's gonna be real nice. Set the perfect ambience with Smalt's color-changing mood light. Engage all your senses with Smalt, the world's first interactive centerpiece. Support Smalt today and help us bring the world's first interactive centerpiece and smart salt dispenser to your dining table. Let's make everyday dining fun. Yeah, when I think of fun, I think of salt shakers. I also love in their demonstration of the mood lighting, you couldn't even tell what f***ing color was being shown there. It just, it's so insignificant. It's not cool looking. It doesn't make any difference to anything. It's just a massive inconvenience and it tries to do a lot of things and it's going to do them poorly. Also, this thing has to be charged and has four hours of battery life. So, if you forget to charge your salt shaker, ain't nobody at your f***ing dinner party having salt. Stupid item. That's it. See ya. What's up, everybody? It's critical. It's not often that a product just infuriates me. I can usually see the merit in most products, and it's not the product's fault it exists. It didn't ask to be born into this world, and I can't hate it for it, you know? But there's a new product now that I feel nothing but hatred towards. It's called the Juicero, and it's the stupidest shit I've ever seen in my life. It's a $400 juicer, is what it's claiming, but all it does is it f***ing smashes a pre-packaged thing of juice into a cup. But that's not even the part that just makes me angry. It's this ridiculous need to make everything connected to the internet at all times. This juicer can only function as long as you're connected through Wi-Fi and on your smartphone with their stupid Juicero app. Slap in the face. Everything is connected to the internet these days for absolutely no reason, provides no benefits, it's nothing but a hindrance. Next it'll be shoes that are have to be connected to the internet to the where I'm off. My Wi-Fi is acting up a little bit, I guess I'm not wearing shoes today. Stupid. Let's just roll the instructional video here. Open the outer box and use the handles on the side to lift the inner box out. Open the inner box and locate the quick start setup guide. This is the best thing about the product is the packaging. That's the only thing I like about it. It opens up really cool. It's like you're discovering an alien artifact. But then once you take that wiping cloth off, all you get is a f***ing brick. Remove the cover from the press and lift it off the box. To get started, plug in your press and make sure the lights on the front flash a few times. Open your Juicero app and sign in with your account. Oh uh, yes, a natural second step after you plug it in, make sure to sign up on the app. You know, it's like if I bought a bowling ball, I'd have to download an app and sign up before I could use the bowling ball. It's f***ing stupid. And also, in the actual privacy statement from this company, it even says blatantly that it is going to give your private information at any business that asks. So that's good. I know no one really gives a f*** about privacy anymore, but that's just a nice slap in the face, just spitting right in your mouth. The app will guide you through setting up your press. First, choose the Wi-Fi network you'd like your press to connect to, and then enter its password. This is a pivotal second step here in the setup process. It's important to be on your Wi-Fi so that way you can watch porn while your s*** juicing. Locate the scanner and read the instructions for generating your QR code. Tap the button to generate your QR code. Turn your phone for the beep. Your press will now try to... When it connects, your app will update and the cloud light on the inside of your press will turn white. Why the f*** are there all these steps? All this thing does is clobber a f***ing juice packet. Why does it need to connect to my phone and what if the f*** does it need to update? It's not going to get a more efficient boulder to smash it with. It's st static, it can't change, it's not gonna morph into something, it's not a f***ing Power Ranger. It is just going to remain exactly the same. Why does it need to update? What is it updating? And why does it need to connect to something? What is it connecting to? The f***ing Code Lyoko? Holy shit. Now that your press is all set up, you're ready to press your first pack and enjoy some juice. Yeah, after you've already been taken to the hospital for dehydration because it took 45 f***ing minutes to set up this son of a already lost your appetite now. You know, honestly though, I see why this is attractive to some people. Honestly, when I'm making some smoothies sometimes, I'll think to myself, you know, I really wish this quick and efficient process could be stretched out over the course of 30 minutes and require 14 different gadgets to accomplish. Now, thanks to the Juicero, I can set up my Indiana Jones of booby trap juicers, and it only requires one telephone, my TV remote, and my digital alarm clock to pull it off. Start by removing your pack bundle from the packaging. Rip open the top of the bundle and remove a pack. Open your press and place the pack inside. Make sure the spout of the pack hangs outside of and below the door. 
shut the door of the press. You will hear a lock after you close it. Place a tall glass under the press and then press the button. In a few moments, juice will start flowing out of the bottom of the pack. It will take a couple of minutes for the press to make the juice. It's like magic. Wow, it's just that easy. Damn, all of that setup was certainly worth it and obviously required to go ahead and hang a packet and then slam a door on it. Your juice is ready when all of the noises stop and the light on the front turns off. Ta-da! That's all. What, were you expecting more out of $400? What really shocks me about this thing is Google poured $120 million into this product. How the f*** would they ever think this is a good idea? What was the pitch like? Oh yeah, you know, we just kind of put a packet in there and close a door on it, but you can do it from anywhere and you're connected to the internet while you do it. Oh, brilliant! Get, get on board! Johnson, uh, take out all the funds! We're going in! We're doubling down! This sh** can juice from anywhere! Another sh** business practice for this hunk of f is that the Juicero will refuse to juice any package that is not a Juicero brand, which is what the QR code is for, to verify that this is an authentic Juicero brand. If it's anything else, it just won't work. It will refuse to smash it. You know, that's what I want with my technology. I want to buy a machine that can tell me no when I ask it to do what it's f***ing designed to do. If everything I've said and everything you've seen is not enough to convince you that the Juicero is not a necessity in life, let me just go ahead and play this video for you. Oh, what are the odds? What, you don't need a machine to smash a package? You can use your hands? Oh, it's barbaric. I, oh, what kind of uncivilized future are we living in? I know. But believe me, it might save you $400 to just use your hands to squeeze the package. It's incredible. This is by far the worst product I've ever seen. Nothing has actually made me this angry at a product before. Fuck you, Juicero. That's it. So yeah. What's up, everybody? It's Critical. I want to show the aftermath of a Kickstarter scam. Let me show you what happens when a Kickstarter goes wrong. Here's an old scam from three years ago called the Air Umbrella. I'll go ahead and play the campaign pitch. This Air Umbrella shelters you from the rain using a powerful stream of air. And it comes in three different versions with a fixed height of 30 centimeters. This is really all I need to play of this pile of sh**. Basically, it's just a giant fan on a stick that repels rain by blasting it with air. It's a f***ing horrendous idea that somehow got $100,000 in funding. It looks like one of those vibrating wands you see in porn videos where the actress stimulates her c*** that way so it's ready for the pounding. But here, instead of preparing p for sex, it was preparing p to empty their wallets on a product that had no chance of ever being delivered. Now going to updates shows you that the last one was in 2016 where they said they're issuing refunds. This is two years after they failed to deliver the product. I don't believe they delivered even a f***ing penny to anyone as evidenced by the comments. Now let's turn our attention to the evidence here where we can find the protagonist of this sad story, Michael, the super backer. So not much is known about Michael Superbacker other than he is very upset that he didn't get his air umbrella or his refund. I went three years back to his first comment and we'll just go from there. I'm going to skip a few because there's a ton of comments from him. He very rarely went that long without commenting on here asking for a refund or updates on the project. So I'm just going to show enough to tell this sad story about what happens when a Kickstarter goes sour. Now this is where our story begins. It's January 9th, 2015. His first comment is innocent enough. It said a December delivery, January 9th, and I haven't received my umbrella yet. Are they already sent out? A slight bit of foreshadowing here for the events that are about to unfold on this Kickstarter scam. He kind of gets this stinky sniff of some asshole that, you know, I still haven't received it and it said December. Uh, maybe the postal guy might have stolen it because it's so high tech and cool. Hmm, did anyone else get it? Four months go by and Michael starts to get the itch for more knowledge on the air umbrella. What's going on, boys? Has human technology advanced far enough to bring to fruition this beautiful air umbrella idea? Looking for updates, but you don't go on these parts looking for updates I'm in the air umbrella unless you're trying to get yourself killed. A couple weeks later, we're introduced to our supporting character, Rahim. Remember this name, it won't be the last time you see him during this saga. Another, another scam on Kickstarter, he says. Looks like Kickstarter is full of fraudsters. How right you are, Rahim. Michael then asks for an update. How is the umbrella coming along? A question that will forever be unanswered since the creators tucked their dicks in their assholes and ran away. 
After six months of searching for updates, Michael finally reaches his breaking point, his limit, his boiling point, his coming point. This is the first time he demands a refund. In May, he tries again. Refund, please. May 17th, he just wants an update now. The refund, just give him some information. I would like an update, Kickstarter. You can't just sit around and do nothing. Air Umbrella and Kickstarter, this is unacceptable. Little does Muzzin give a fuck about anything on their website, and there is no quality control, nor is there any responsibility. Michael, you know what Kickstarter says when it sees something like that? Ha ha ha. And then it spits in your fucking mouth, because it's still, Kickstarter is still wiping their ass with a cut of the money you donated to a scam on their platform. Michael then says, After backing over 30 campaigns, I have never seen a project go silent. No updates, no comments, doesn't even sign into Kickstarter since 2014 until now. I want an update, my umbrella, or a refund, Kickstarter, do something already. Michael Superbacker, I have to say, I just don't believe you here. If you truly have backed over 30 projects that have all delivered on time, as promised, the same project as pitched, then you should be playing the lottery weekly, because you'd be a multi-millionaire and you can make your own f***ing air umbrella that also sucks your dick while it's blocking the rain. Because the odds of you having backed 30 successful Kickstarter campaigns that all delivered on time, as promised, are about as low as the earth actually being flat. It's impossible. Kickstarter has become known for the projects going silent, no updates, no refunds. It's just become known for giant scams. It's incredibly rare to find projects that actually deliver as promised and on time. November 2nd, one full year after successful funding. Christ, they haven't even signed into Kickstarter in over a year. These guys are horse If they contact you, tell them we all want a refund. He has now become the voice of the Air Umbrella enthusiast community, and they all want their f***ing refund. Michael then talks about another scam crowdfunding project in which he finishes with an idea of his own here. With all these Kickstarter failures and frauds, I think I want to start mightily fail to deliver a quality product as stated in the launch video. Also, rate companies that have great track records for producing amazing products. My $128 will not go in vain. He may not have been able to save his $128, but you can be damn sure he's going to avenge it. Friendships are formed over the common interest of receiving a refund. Raheem states, Michael, I want my money back. To which Michael responds, Raheem, I want my money back. Michael attempts to boost morale in the comments section, wishing everyone a Merry Christmas, and then asking, where is his air umbrella? It seems Santa Claus will not be delivering an air umbrella to him this year, next year, the year after, or any other Christmas. It's been over a year since successful funding of the Air Umbrella, and the season one of this Kickstarter anime is drawing to a close and we finally get a word from our supervillain of the season. They don't have much to offer other than the empty promise of refunds on the prototype in secret and wants pictures and updates of their progress in the last 15 months, unaware that they have done f*** all on the project. And it's truly just upsetting. In what was a truly shocking development in the Kickstarter anime, Season 2 began with a bang, with Air Umbrella coming out saying that they are going to be issuing refunds and have them all given to backers very soon. Unfortunately though, the anime doesn't end with refunds. This was also the last time the villain was ever heard from. Some say the villain died on this day, but me. I think this was truly the birth of the villain. Michael wastes no time letting it be known that he is ready to receive his refund of his $128 investment. The comment section erupts with people ready to get their refund and excited to finally wash their hands of this horrible scam they fell victim to. Keen suggests sending a private message to the creators to honor the refund, but they don't check private messages because they haven't logged in in years. So they take to the comments still. Michael then asks if anyone has received a refund, maybe they're just singling Michael out, but it turns out they don't hold a grudge against Michael Superbacker. Nobody has received a refund. As the months go on, more and more people start to abandon ship, realizing that asking for a refund is futile, and then it's just Michael and Raheem here, left waiting for their refund, constantly commenting asking for that refund to come. But unfortunately, that refund never comes. It's May 8th, 2016. Michael, I need my money back now. And he's not alone. Raheem is still side by side with his friend waiting for that refund. As we fast forward through 2016, we see Michael is unrelenting in his quest to get his $128 back. His persistence not rewarded throughout all of 2016. Season 2 winds down to a close and we enter Season 3 in 2017. And that is where we currently are now. Michael asking hello. 
hello, somebody to respond, hello, hello again, a little more polite. He then points out it was funded nearly three years ago. He once again resorts to saying hello, hello, hello. And then it brings us to November 8th, 2017. When am I receiving my product? He's given up on the refund, but he's still holding on to the hope that that air umbrella is out there waiting for him somewhere, cold and alone. Raheem takes a different approach to getting his refund or his product. He then suggests murdering the scammers. I mean, I think scamming is absolutely horrible, and it's really hard to accept when you've been scammed. I've been there, especially when you know on RuneScape. Free armor trimming will get you every time when you're a young boy, and you never forget it. So I can understand the anger. Murdering these scammers, I mean, the world would be better off without them, yeah. I, I can agree with that, but I don't think that's going to help get his refund or get his product. But this concludes the story so far on the Air Umbrella Kickstarter story. That's it. And may Kickstarter give Michael his refund. Please, Kickstarter, give Michael his refund. Give the Air Umbrella backers their f***ing refunds. They've waited long enough. That's it. See ya. What's up, everybody? It's Critical. I'm here to slap those cheeks with another sh Kickstarter project. This one's the Hush Me, the world's first voice mask for smartphones. I've noticed a common theme among these horrible Kickstarter projects. They all say the world's first something. The world's first Wi-Fi enabled pencil eraser. Just a bunch of stupid sh**. Let's just dive into this one. I'm gonna go ahead and spoil the surprise so you're not shocked and just thrown off your seat by the pure, just, intensity of this reveal. The Hush Me is that f***ing electric shock collar he's got around his neck. Yeah, that bulky plastic neck pillow is the Hush Me. That covert piece of technology. one of those stupid breathing masks some people put on going to the gym even though it does absolutely nothing for them to help with their gains or their workout other than make them look like an absolute psychopath. just this f***ing disgusting looking dental tool and talk right in the presence of everyone. How well can this really muffle the sound though? Let's be honest, look at this piece of shit. It looks like a stretched out condom. It can't be perfect here. You can probably still be heard. If you're in a library and you get a call about your girlfriend cheating on you, I don't think you're going to feel comfortable putting the hush me around your mouth and then yelling on the phone in the presence of everyone there. I on the mask and from the other hand keep the external noise from getting into the microphone yeah you're not fooling me here that's literally just like screaming into a pillow all that is is just a little bit of padding for you to talk into you can throw around all the cool hip buzzwords you want like ergonomic and smegma infused i just don't believe it that does not look like it would actually keep people from hearing what you're saying. So the person on the other end will hear you clearly, but the people nearby will not be able to understand a single word which you've pronounced while wearing the mask. Now that's a big difference between not hearing and not understanding. If you can still hear them, just not quite make out what the words are, that's still disruptive. You're still an inconvenience to that person. It's just, it, this is solving a non-existent problem. Just step outside. It's a lot less disruptive to the people around you, a lot less of an eyesore because you're not wearing this weird set of braces like Jimmy from Ed, Ed, and Eddie. And you don't have to worry about the FBI agents posted at the laundromat listening in on your business calls. The active voice masking mode is provided by the electronic switches located in the headband. The button pressing activates the external speakers, which are located on the perimeter of the mask. 
these speakers will generate sound. While using the mask in the active mode, the resulting sound will, in any case, be lower than the sound from your voice itself without a mask, so you will not cause any inconvenience to others. I have watched this small segment here about six times and I still don't get what the f this is about. So a speaker that I guess transmits some white noise at a low frequency that's lower than the sound of your voice without a mask and that's somehow not an inconvenience to people. If I'm wearing a f***ing boombox around my mouth and transmitting white noise even if it's not very loud, even if it's less loud than if I was just talking on the phone without this ridiculous Happy Meals toy around my face. That's still an inconvenience to people and a distraction. It'd be just much better to step outside. On behalf of the entire Hashmi team, I would like to thank you all for the following us and supporting our project. Hashmi keep talking amazing do i really need to point out how that could easily be faked yeah, overall just a sh project even if it works as designed and as portrayed it's still a stupid pro a stupid product it makes no sense this doesn't help anyone in any real situation that's it so yeah time for more sh kickstarter projects this one's about sending your dna into the future Basically, this project is you pay for a receptacle that you can spit in or piss in, and then you can bury it somewhere and hope that 2,000 years from now, someone will revive you from that DNA they find in there. In the future, human cloning will be a reality. Legal, regulated, safe, a sort of human immortality will exist. Unfortunately, it'll be too late for you. You'll be dead. Getting morbid as quickly as possible in order to scare a consumer into buying this piece of product that's very low soccer mom but what if you could live again come back for a second round with your soulmate your children your best friends six members of the football team why only six members of the football team why wouldn't i want to spend time again with the whole football team was i only friends with six of them and how would you know which six i was friends with maybe i was friends with the entire football team and not just the seal team six of the squad don't assume you know who i was friends with on my football team well, now you can with It Goes On DNA Gene Bank Time Capsule. All that's needed is a tiny sample of your DNA, the building blocks of life that made you. So the It Goes On Quantum Flux Capacitor DNA Time Traveling Extraordinaire device is what they're selling here. Basically, that clown nose she's holding over there, you just kind of put fecal matter and, you know, come inside of it. And then you seal it up and then you wait. Enough to grow another you and anybody with you. Just collect a few hairs, some nail clippings, or a tooth or bone fragment, and insert them into a glass vial. It sounds like the start to some type of satanic ritual or demon magic. That right there is some straight up sorcery ingredients. All it's missing is some lamb's blood. Store the vials inside your capsule. As soon as you've collected all the samples you need from anybody you want to take on this journey with you, seal your capsule and deposit it anywhere. At sea, Buried in the backyard, on the mantle as a tribute to your life and the lives of those you love. Yep, and then that's it. You just kind of hide it like it's a f***ing easter egg hunt. I don't understand the thought process here. You put all your DNA sh into this hollowed out nipple and then you hide it somewhere. And for some reason, someone in the future is going to find it and have an interest in reviving you, even though they have no idea who you are or what's inside of it. But let's go ahead and put that aside, that for some reason they decided to open up this jelly bean here. They look inside and what do they find? F toenail clippings and bone fragment? I don't understand why they'd be like, oh, I have to revive this person. No, it's just the amount of DNA I needed to bring them back to life. I can't imagine any f futuristic mad scientist actually going through with reviving someone who happened to put all of their DNA into this zit thing. It just doesn't make any sense. Nothing is lost forever. And someday, an archaeologist, a scuba diver, a backyard explorer will find your capsule. And that unique sequence of DNA that is you will get a second chance at life. Just imagine what your future holds. Yeah, and that's the end of the pitch. It cuts to like a Universal Studios introduction type animation. But yeah, this is probably the sh** project I've seen on Kickstarter so far. The pitch itself, the video, it's not the worst in the world, it's just simply the idea is so 
unbelievably ridiculous that I can't understand at all how anyone would ever support this and think it was a good idea. That's it. So yeah. What's up everybody, it's Critical, and I believe I found the strangest project on Kickstarter. It's called a Butterfly Romper. Sounds innocent enough, just your standard fashion Kickstarter project, and I'm pretty up to date on fashion myself, so I know what a romper is. I also know about the backwards baseball caps, the fingerless gloves, all the cool shit that kids wear these days. So I understood right away what this was going to be about, but the Kickstarter video will leave many of you scarred. And that's it. This video looks like the VHS tape from the Ring movies. I'm sure half of you were expecting Samara to call you on the phone right when this ended. Now if that Kickstarter video doesn't sell you on how great the Butterfly Romper is, then I just don't know what will. I can't believe that this project wasn't funded. I can't imagine what turned people off from backing this one. The f***ing Kickstarter video was a masterpiece. It was like the I Feel Fantastic YouTube video. Now let's slow it down a little bit and go frame by frame to see what we missed. So here's the first frame, I'm guessing this is her showing off the butterfly romper. I don't understand why she went with some type of subliminal advertising Kickstarter video here. It would have been better just to kind of show it off in one fluid shot. The model's getting a little closer to the camera now, but this time the hashtag look dope has popped up on screen. Not exactly the best hashtag to promote your romper, but then again, neither is anything in this Kickstarter video. Now, I know I said a moment ago that this project wasn't funded. However, that's not entirely accurate considering this is a newer project and it still has 20 days to go. I'm simply making this assumption that it won't be funded because there are zero backers for it right now. I could be wrong. Maybe there's going to be a huge influx of people that are just demanding the butterfly romper who become brainwashed from this haunted Kickstarter pitch. But yeah, as of right now, it doesn't look like it's going to get funded. This briefly flashes on the screen for only a split second, but luckily, thanks to my CSI investigation unit, I was able to slow it down and able to get a very clear, high-resolution, enhanced image of it. It's hashtag stay dressed. Good advice. It's probably good when you're in public to stay dressed. I, you know, nothing wrong with that. Now, this is by far the creepiest part of this. It says Gigi and Bo in Long Island. This is like in the horror movies where there's a, a video over top of like an anniversary video, you know, Stacy and Herman in Idaho, you know, like the honeymoon or something. And then there's some type of sinister video on top of it. That's what this shit is. Maybe this was a Gigi and Bo anniversary video or wedding video or something. And then the butterfly romper curse took it over. Now at the end of the video, it says you can scroll down for more information, but I didn't do that. I was worried if I scrolled down further, perhaps the curse of the mummy would be finished. And I didn't want to f with that. So whoever's brave enough to scroll down further on the Butterfly Romper, by all means, all power to you. But this is by far the strangest Kickstarter page I've come across. That's it. See ya. What's up everybody, it's Critical. Have you ever wanted to just throw money away and get nothing in return? Well thanks to the magic and beauty of Kickstarter, there's now a project for you. It's called Maverick Business Solutions, or MBS for short. But I like to think the MBS stands for Maybe Buy Something Else. Welcome to the currency auto trader of the future. I'm going to go ahead and spoil this. There is no explanation of what the currency auto trader is, how it works, what it does. This whole video is nothing but pictures of these bulls and these bears. I guess it's trying to hint that, hey, this is bull sh or you're barely going to get anything in return for your investment. Did that answer all your questions? I'm sure it did. I really like this. This is exactly like a Microsoft PowerPoint presentation I would have made when I was running for middle school class council and I promised shrink rays to the class. That's exactly what they did here, but on Kickstarter. Oh, all those problems you're having, we have the solutions. That athlete's foot will take care of it. This whole smell like shit, no problem. We have the answers. Just go ahead and give us a couple thousand dollars on Kickstarter. Now besides the horrendous little jigsaw puzzle of bulls and bears they were solving in the Kickstarter video, my favorite thing about this project is the, the uh, backer rewards. Let's go ahead and scroll down and take a look at these bad boys. 
At $100, you get a thank you card. Talk about value. Now, if you think that's nuts, check out the crazy bang for your buck you get at $1,000. Another thank you card. I don't know what separates the two. I guess the $1,000 one's signed with his sperm or something, but damn, that is some good shit right there. That's what I expect to get when I'm dropping 100 or $1,000 on a piece of shit Kickstarter project like this. I know the title of this says investing in your future, but it looks like what you're actually investing in is thank you cards. I love Kickstarters like these where they come up with just a stupid idea and all it is is an idea. There is no team. There is no proof of concept. It's just, hey, here's my idea. I think this idea is worth X amount of thousands of dollars. Please just give it to me and I'll give you a thank you card or I'll even draw you a little picture with some crayons. It's just ridiculous, but uh, yeah, that's it. So yeah, what's up everybody? It's critical. Do you remember those whole cans growing up where you smash them together and shit? And they were made out of foam and they were kind of cool to play with as a kid. Well, this Kickstarter aims to take that idea, make the Hulk hands out of cast iron and use them for the same purposes you'd use a sledgehammer for. But it doesn't seem they understand why that's not a good idea. I'm just going to go ahead and play a little part of the Kickstarter pitch because the video itself is very boring. But I want to show the product. Fun and most of all, effective. You can use it anywhere. It's the ideal tool for remodeling or renovation. Made from approximately 5 pounds of cast iron, it's virtually indestructible. Demophis is designed in such a way that the forces are perfectly balanced around your hand. It takes the best things about the hammer and combines it with modern day design and engineering. It takes the best things about a hammer and says, F*** those, we're gonna make this cool. It looks like the f***ing Doomfist's gauntlet from Overwatch. It's like the creators of the demo fist either don't know or don't care that using a five pound cast iron fist like a sledgehammer is going to break a lot of wrists. It's also going to fuck up a lot of shoulders, that's for sure. But I can see some practical purposes here. If anything sucks as a sledgehammer or a demolition tool or pretty much any type of tool. However, this is a very adult and dangerous version of sock and boppers that I can really respect. Like imagine if McGregor and Mayweather fought using the demo fists instead of boxing gloves. That sh would be nuts. I can also see this having a really useful purpose in gangs. Let's say you want to send a message to a rival gang. Well, you can smash someone's head with this thing and won't no one give you sh anymore. You'd get yourself a cool nickname on the street like Turbo Head Smasher Guy, something real scary like that, and you won't have any problems with any other gangs. Now, in all honesty, this is one of the cooler products I've seen on Kickstarter. This actually seems like some type of super villain weapon. However, it's a terrible product. You'd be better off just slapping buildings down with your bare hands. At least you wouldn't injure yourself as much. It's not effective. It's not useful. It's not going to help. It's dangerous. You're going to hurt yourself with it. But damn, does this thing look kind of cool. That's it. See What's up, everybody? It's Critical. I was at CVS and I saw these night view glasses and I remembered their commercial, so I just had to pick them up. You need visual clarity. Get it instantly with Night View NV, the glare reduction glasses that turn fuzzy and dull into clear and bright, even at night. Whoa, it's brighter, there's no glare. Need night view glasses just to view the commercial clearly. It's so f dark. But I'm not here to test whether or not it really does make things clearer at night, nor am I here to test the UAV, UV, gamma radiation protective coating that the glasses are soaked in or whatever. I'm just here to test out one claim. Your frames look great on anyone and are virtually indestructible. This is what I'm here to put to the test. This man's heart wasn't in it with that hammer. He wasn't putting any elbow grease onto those glasses. There was no effort there at all. He didn't even try. He was giving it like a very gentle spank on the tuchus. That's not gonna break shit. That wouldn't break a f***ing eggshell. I'm here to put it to a manly test. Here's the packaging, looks beautiful. Let's go ahead and break this bitch open. Alright, so the box is what's virtually indestructible. Jesus! Finally. Had to crack open that pot of gold. There we go. Here's our reward. This nice hunk of oh, I like how it comes with little directions here. Let's take a gander. Oh, no, that's super duper cute. That is absolutely adorable. Look at the caution. Before using, please check to ensure that you can see properly. Well, no sh That caution can be applied to every single product out there right now. If you can read that warning, you're probably in good shape. But if you can't, then your battleship is already sunk and you shouldn't be driving in the first place. Here they are, the super slick, super stylish, yellow tinted turbo extreme night view glasses. Look at that. Can already see my shirt more clearly. Alright, let's put them through a simple test. Looks good. 
Hasn't broken yet. Let's do a little corkscrew action here. A little DNA helix type shit. So far- oh. Well, that was easy. You know, maybe I just found their weak spot. Like, this is a boss battle and I just happen to get lucky and go right for the weak spot. Let's go ahead and put this to a more realistic test because when you're driving, no one's gonna be trying to RKO your sunglasses. It's just not realistic. No one's gonna be throwing your face into a full Nelson with these bad boys on. Alright, so I got a power drill. We're gonna put this to the standardized stress test for sunglasses. So just picture this, you're driving down the highway, all of a sudden a power drill comes flying out of nowhere, hits your glasses, you don't want them to break on it. You want it to deflect that power drill, right? So let's see how it does. Whoops. We're just gonna put this to a nice realistic test here. Let's do a little surface scratching, see if it gives. That no, looks pretty good. Yeah, it's hanging on pretty strong. Now let's put a little more impact on it. A little more pressure. Let's get a better angle here. I'm quite the cinematographer. Look at this shit. Steven Spielberg, if you need me, I'm available. It's holding on pretty good so far. Oh man, it's even with... It's even absorbing some of the impact. Impressive. It managed to withstand the whirlwind fury of my drill karate. It's worth mentioning I didn't go super hard here because although my neighbors make a whole bunch of noise upstairs like it's a f***ing war zone, they had the audacity to call a noise complaint on me when I accidentally dropped something and it made a loud noise. So I didn't want to risk a second noise complaint, so I didn't make it super duper hard because I didn't want to create a whole bunch of noise. Alright, test number two. So it's an average Friday night, you're chasing a ninja who's riding a motorcycle, you're trying to get the nuclear football back from him, but he's armed with some kunai, and you're wearing your night view glasses, and he throws a kunai back, you're gonna want to make sure it doesn't crack your glasses, right? That's common sense, so let's go ahead and put this to the standard kunai test and see how it, see how it holds up. I managed to break through the glasses and create a small hole. It didn't shatter the glasses or anything, which I was very surprised with. So these glasses are actually very effective if you're facing off against a rogue carpenter who's throwing power drills at you, or if you're in hot pursuit of a ninja throwing knives back at you. Overall, I'm very surprised the glasses didn't shatter, although I wasn't using a super huge amount of force or anything like that. I wasn't pushing on it with the force of 10,000 newtons or anything. I'm just very surprised they didn't just explode like most other as-seen-on-TV products would. Now, for all the FBI agents out there, this is no substitute for the good old-fashioned Kevlar eye patches for protection for your eyes, but if you're in a pinch and all you can find are some night view glasses, it's probably worth putting on. That's it. So yeah. Nothing makes you question humanity more than going into a public restroom. That shit is absolutely yucky to the highest possible level. Just the amount of degeneracy that must unfold in these public restroom stalls is enough to make even God question his decision to make this species. But luckily there's potty packs to make the public restrooms just a little bit worse. Remember the last time you used a public restroom? I'm sure we can all relate to this scene right here. We've all shared a very similar experience going into the public restroom and then looking at like some f***ing Osmosis Jones sh** going on in there. I like the way they illustrate it. It looks like a scene from Rick and Morty. You got like a f***ing pickle Rick flying out of the toilet water at them. That'd make anyone tremble in fear for sure. Does the thought of germs and sitting on a dirty toilet make you cringe? Yeah, it often does make me cringe and say yucko if I'm forced to use a public restroom because I gotta take a massive sh** or something like that. But they're never quite this bad. I don't know what kind of demon of filth was using this restroom, but they've caked sh** all over the place. They've high-fived the wall with a handful of sh** behind the toilet there. Look at that. This is like a cave painting of feces. What kind of damn troglodyte wandered into this public restroom here and just decided to completely plaster the entire place with his juice? To be honest, I think this toilet is the least of this family's concern here because this establishment is obviously pretty f***ing disgusting to be having sh** fiends wandering around throwing sh** on the walls of the bathroom must not be a very nice place ew tired of makeshift options that just don't work well you never have to worry about that again introducing potty packs the portable toilet seat cover and toiletry system that prevents your skin and clothing from touching the toilet seat and bowl when using a public restroom you know what accomplishes that same goal 
toilet paper. Putting toilet paper on the toilet seat does this same thing except better and more sanitary because you can flush it afterwards. Meanwhile, using this, they expect you to put it down and then put it back into your carrying case. You're literally taking all the joy of using a public toilet with you. You might as well just start licking the toilet seat. Simply place the potty pack seat cover right on top of the toilet seat before using a public restroom. And when you're done, just wipe clean, fold it up, and go. Then just throw it in the machine when you get home. Yep, it's that easy. Yep, it's that disgusting. This is basically a to-go box for your public restroom. All you're doing is taking all that gross sh from the toilet seat with you. No one's gonna want to be near you. No one's gonna want to be within 10 feet of the lunatic who's carrying around this rancid fermenting purse that has this godforsaken, gross-smelling toilet seat of shit in it. You're just going to be a stinky, stinching loser who's got the portable toilet seat with them that's been used not only by your ass, but the ass of everyone that used that toilet seat before you. What you basically have in your purse there is a septic tank. You've got a petri dish of ass with you. There's nothing you're going to be able to do for the smell, and it's obviously going to smell since you're putting it on a dirty public toilet seat. Paper, t toilet paper solves this problem by being flushable. You can't flush that. The unique patented four side flaps hang over the front, back, and sides of the toilet to prevent your skin and clothes from having any contact with the toilet seat. Best of all, the Potty Packs is waterproof, bacteria and mold resistant, and machine washable. There's few things I have less respect for than patented technology. Patents are an absolute scam these days. Patent squatters, it's such a corrupt market. F your patents. And in this case, patenting the fact that it drapes over the toilet, yee-haw. What a hero. God forbid someone take this genius idea. The only person that would want something even close to this is some psychotic fetishist that wants to always be sniffing toilet seats or some crazy sh And who the f cares if it's machine washable? What, no one's gonna want to wash this. No one's gonna want to touch this. The second you use this, you're gonna want to immediately throw it away. It's a waste. No one's gonna want to keep reusing this, and they shouldn't want to, because it's just damn disgusting. Unlike messy toilet paper or those flimsy paper seat covers, Potty Packs is made of a durable yet comfortable nylon material with non-skid pads underneath so it stays in place and leaks won't soak through. I wouldn't care if this thing spit hundred dollar bills into my butthole as I finish shitting. It's not worth it. It's so gross. Just the idea of reusing toilet seat covers is just abhorrent. What an abysmal idea for a product. Potty Packs even comes with a convenient and discreet carrying case with wrist strap for easy portability when you're on the go. The last thing I think about when thinking of public toilet seat covers is portability. I want that to stay there, I don't want to see it again. Meanwhile, with this thing, it's going to be f***ing haunting you. Horrible idea for a pro product. Honestly, perhaps the worst I have genuinely ever seen in my life. I couldn't think of a more batch product if I tried. It's such a horrible idea. I can't imagine anyone having watched this and think, you know what? I do need that. It's so gross. So f***ing gross. Uh, that's it. See ya. It's been a little while since I've seen a product so bad it leaves the taste of ass in my mouth. Allow me to introduce you to the nightlight, Matt. I'll share the commercial with you all. As you can immediately tell by this man's face, he's having some nightmares. His face is all scrunched up like someone planted a wet fart on it and he's grossed out. He's having a rough night's sleep and it's about to get even worse when he wakes up and his worst nightmare has been realized. He's been trapped in a nightlight, Matt, commercial. Nature calls, it's the same problem. You gotta go. But your bedroom is so dark, you stumble, fumble, and bang your toe. Now this is absolutely a real problem I can see people struggling with. I'd be lying if I said I've never gotten up to tinkle in the middle of the night and hit my sh** on a ton of things on the way there. But it's not that they're trying to solve a non-issue, it's that their solution is so f stupid it's convinced me Jesus isn't real. Ow! Introducing Nightlight Mat, the sensor-activated floor mat with built-in LED path lighting. Now you'll never walk in the dark anymore, because the lights come on. Ta-da! They're very tiny mats that barely light up, and you have to string them all together as if you're following a quest marker in a video game. Even in their own commercial, these lights look weak as shit. It looks like they run off half of a AAA battery. If you unlocked your phone screen, it'd light up more of a dark room than five of these put together in a huddle. It's super f 
useless and especially because they're on the floor you're not really even going to see what it's illuminating it's still gonna be mainly dark plus it just looks terrible just these tiny random pieces of rug that are booby trapped to shoot the world's weakest lights out of them i swear to god the light from a digital alarm clock is more illuminating than these it's just super useless totally useless especially when you consider that you have to remember exactly where you place these because they're only like five inches wide so you're still going to be walking around in the dark limp in hand trying to find these things and stomping around looking like you're playing dance dance revolution and even if you do get lucky enough to find one you're still not gonna be able to see shit except for that small platform there's absolutely no reason why you wouldn't just use your phone light to find your way around instead of having these rug samples tossed around it's just absolutely useless the moment your feet hit the floor the secret is the smart sensor technology that activates ultra powerful led lights when you step on the mat and then turns them off when you're safely away so no matter how dark the room the light you need is just one step away calling these leds ultra powerful is a sin that has to be the biggest overstatement of all time but even if they were ultra powerful really great leds they're still totally useless just look at the scenario they give you here I don't know exactly what's going on, but this elderly woman's taking the walk of shame. She just got done with a one-night stand, so she's carrying her high heels, and she's got her purse, and she's going back after getting dicked down. But she's walking along this preset path like she's a scripted NPC. That's not realistic. People aren't going to take the exact same walking path every time. Also, I don't understand. Are the nightlight mats something you leave out 24 hours a day, or do you only break them out when you think you'll need them? For example, in this situation, you know, Ruth gets the call for a penis appointment, and she knows by the time she gets back, it's going to be late at night, it's going to be dark out. But she doesn't want to turn the overhead lights on because her husband Henry might catch notice of that and wake up and catch her being unfaithful. So she planned in advance, she set the nightlight mats out so that way when she came home she could just step on these and find her way around. I, I don't really understand the situation when these would ever be effective. Even in a power outage, these things would still suck and a flashlight would be far superior and easier and cheaper and a lot more versatile. Watch, simply step on the mat once to activate, and once again to turn nightlight mat off. It's that easy, and nightlight mat is great to use in the kids' rooms. As soon as their feet hit the floor, it's not dark anymore. You know what else would make it not dark? A phone flashlight that every kid and majority of older people have these days. I'm no special effects expert, but this looks faked. This looks like it was added post-production. This does not look like it was the same lights that the LEDs have been giving off this entire commercial. This looks like the lights were so f weak that it didn't light up the teddy bear at all, so they added in a brightness to it in post-production. Use nightlight mat in the kitchen for late night snacks. Just look at this f picture here. What advantage did the nightlight mat give this little girl stealing cookies from the cookie jar? All the light is directed at the fucking ground, so unless she just dumps the entire jar onto the floor to look at the cookies on the ground, the nightlight mat's gonna not- it's not gonna be any help to her at all. It's still pitch black from the ground up. It just so happens if you're maybe in the ant's life and someone steps on a nightlight mat, it'll be like getting shot with a spotlight, maybe. But to, you know, stealing cookies in the middle of the night and you step on a nightlight mat, nothing happens. You wouldn't even know. You wouldn't see a difference. Or brighten up those hard-to-reach places in the closet. Be welcomed home with a light at your front door. Add brilliant light to your basement floor. If your dad is relying on the light from the nightlight mat during his important work in the basement, he shouldn't be doing that work in the first place. That's a recipe for disaster. If there is something wrong down there, he should turn the light on in the basement or use his phone light instead of the world's weakest flashlight on the goddamn floor. I don't think even doomsday preppers would think to use a nightlight for an emergency. I don't think there would ever be a situation where someone would think, ah, there's if a disaster unfolds, I want a nightlight mat near it so I can still have light in case everything's going wrong. Because they just choose a flashlight over the nightlight mat. Or put one in the hall. Use nightlight mat anywhere at all. You can turn on the big light, but come on, that's way too bright. So why worry a trip at night? But with just one step, your floor is super bright. That is the only good point this commercial makes at all, turning on the big light being intrusive to someone else, so there needs to be something in the middle, but the night light mat is not that middle ground. All this allows you to do is see maybe a couple of extra centimeters on the floor, kind of, maybe. It's just totally f***ing worthless, a totally useless product. That's it. See ya. If you've been around the channel for a while, you'll know that I've made a lot of videos on bad Kickstarter projects like the Air Umbrella, which is an absolute timeless classic, 
and I've also made a lot of content just on bad products in general, and it's just been far too long since I dipped my tootsies back in this pool of bad Kickstarter projects, and boy do I have a doozy for you today. This is a product that aims to solve a problem that modern science has been unable to crack. How to protect our children on Halloween from those villains that are putting razor blades in our chocolate bars. Halloween is one of the deadliest holidays of the year. There's children dropping left and right, littering the streets with their mangled corpses, all because some bad actors are filling the chocolate bars with razors and pins and needles. And we've been defenseless against this menace for too long now. But luckily, this Kickstarter project has the answer with a metal-detecting Halloween candy bucket. Meet Boo the Ghost, the answer to all your prayers. It's a bucket that has a metal detector built in to alert you when a tampered candy bar comes in with a katana blade mounted inside of it. So it was unsuccessful in its funding, which is shocking. It only raised $213 out of its 36k goal, which, you know, just speaks to the state of society. If we're not willing to invest in life-saving life products like this, we're too busy throwing dollar bills on OnlyFans. I mean, this is ridiculous. This would save countless lives on Halloween, and yet it was canceled because it didn't reach its goal. Hi, my name is Sam. We've all heard the horror stories. Holy sh**, that stock, royalty-free Facebook background music is about to have me acting up. That sh** is hypnotizing. But. Let's talk about this real quick. So, the product aims to solve a problem that doesn't exist. It's a made-up boogeyman. The myth of, like, razor blades in chocolate bars and shit. Razor blades in apples, I think, is where it started back when I was in, like, elementary school with that urban legend of, like, this kid got an apple on Halloween, which, I don't know what psychopath gives out apples on Halloween, and he took a bite and there was a razor blade in it is the story we used to get told. And this actually dates back all the way to the 1950s, where someone even wrote a book on it, and then concludes that they couldn't find a single report of a child killed or seriously injured from a contaminated treat received during trick-or-treating, and it's a contemporary legend, and that's all it is. And if you look at the statistics, from 2008 to 2019, there were four cases of tampering, and none of them resulted in an injury. And among those, I'm pretty sure a couple of them had very sketchy details around it that seemed like it was there to drum up fear and hysteria. The couple of the articles he pulled up, one in particular with the Long Island 13-year-old who got like a razor blade in the Three Musketeers bar or whatever, that one had quite a lot of media hype and stir around it. No one was injured during it. But I have seen a couple of theories to suggest that this may have been planted there as more just fear-mongering. Though, of course, I can't fully state since I wasn't there and I don't know the whole situation. But, once again, there's been no real cases of people tampering with Halloween candy that's led to children getting injured or killed from it. It's just a f***ing myth. And also, if we're going to play ball with this whole idea of tampered Halloween candy, Boo the Bucket here is completely defenseless against drugs in the candy. I remember a couple years back there was this big hoopla about, you know, parents, be careful with your kids trick-or-treating on Halloween, there's some scum that's lacing the candy with drugs. And when I read that, I about fell out of my f***ing chair. Who's giving away free drugs on Halloween? Are you kidding me? That shit's more expensive than the candy. I highly doubt there was anyone just willy-nilly giving away free drugs in the damn trick-or-treat buckets. And if there were, Boo has no protocol to stop that. You know, this fentanyl-laced Hershey's bar is going to fly right under the radar under, under Boo's nose. That's going to be given the green light. No razor blades, no problem. But then all of a sudden, bang, little Jonathan's got a whole system full of fentanyl, and it could have been prevented if Boo only had drug-sniffing protocol as well built into the metal detector. Boo the Ghost Inc. will stand by no further. We've developed and patented a proprietary detection system that picks up on these dangerous contaminants and alerts the user before any harm becomes them. His name is Boo the Ghost. Could you have chosen a more creative name? This is so remarkably lazy. Boo the Ghost? Holy sh**. That name has been used billions of times by now. It could have just been anything else. Like, it doesn't even have to be, like, even ghost adjacent. You could have just called them, like... I, you know, Glorbus the ghost, like anything at all that's not just Boo for the millionth time. Boo is crafted with a fully integrated, patented detection system. 
This system consists of a detection coil in the rim that picks up on any metallic objects and uses a vibrating handle with a built-in LED light to alert your child when they are in potential danger. It's pretty simple. It's a metal detector built into the rim, so when something metal passes through it, it has sirens that blare. You know, be careful, metal presence initiating self-destruct protocol to protect the child, that kind of thing. It, except instead of sirens, it just plays like a really weird honking sound. So that's that's basically the system in a nutshell. Pass through a metal detector. If there's metal, you get a honk. So that your child knows when there's a hazardous object present and that a thorough inspection of the candy should be conducted to eliminate the hazardous pin, needle, razor, or metal debris. So you get the little happy birthday kazoo sound effect there when the metal passes through. And I'd like to digest that for a moment here. Let's assume you have this bucket, you get a handful of candy, you dump it in, you hear a honk. Well, now all of a sudden you have no idea which candy triggered it, so you have to go through each and every piece of individual candy and ruin every single one of them. No one's putting candy in one by one. That's not happening. This isn't the TSA. It's Halloween and these are kids just reaching in the buckets or parents taking a handful of candy and dumping it into their bucket like this is this would never be practical because if a honk did go off you would then have to open every single piece of candy and you would then probably want to do it in front of the house where this honk happened because maybe they put a razor blade in there and now you're about to get into a confrontation with this with this family here so you have to break every single piece of candy apart to see which one triggered it and that just seems really ineffective. There's no way of knowing which one it was unless you literally do it one by one, which isn't happening. Right now, it picks up on all metal objects that pass through the rim of the container. As you can see, when a detection is made, the handle vibrates, making your child aware of the danger. Again, this aims to solve a problem that is completely non-existent and is just made up. But, you know, hats off to him for, you know, trying to tackle it. I always appreciate when someone at least tries to make something that they think will be helpful somewhere, but in this case I think it's remarkably misguided. I, I think they have been brainwashed by media fear, and even then, this is so rare. Like, it's it's fine to like caution parents like, hey, there are weird people on Halloween, you should probably trick-or-treat with your kids instead of letting them go all, you know, out in their own willy-nilly. I think that's good advice. Hey, just be with your kids, you know? When they're going out to trick-or-treat, you should just be with them. I think that's fine advice. That's not exactly like being fearful or anything. It's just, why not? Just take that safety measure. I think that's fine. But to try and put the fear of God in everyone, like, you need to be with your kids because there's people putting razor blades and drugs in the candy. Like, then it's a step too far, and then you lead to a situation like this where this guy thinks that, man, I, I have to protect my kids on Halloween because no one else is. There's razor blades in every piece of candy out there, I guess, and this is an essential tool for it. But anyway, just wanted to talk about this a little bit because I found it to be pretty wacky. That's really about it. See ya. Introducing the new need for speed. So much testosterone you'll grow another There's too much need for too much speed this time. Using a new graphical engine, it looks like real Need for Speed 2017. Get those vaginies ready because it's blowing clits and dicks off. Mmm, look at these pancakes taking a bath. You can't make pancakes out of cum. The quantum physics just don't check out. Every amateur knows that. Hi there, Pee Wee Herman here with the flippin' fantastic pancake flipper. You just f***ing slam dunk the pancakes onto the pan and you've got some bite-sized pancakes for the whole family to love. Just pour your pancake batter into this pancake condom and then like a coin you flip it. Except when you flip this coin, your odds of perfect pancakes are 100%. Let me let you in on the secret here. It's the same design used by the Wild West Six Shooters, except we're not putting bullets in these bad boys, we're putting pancakes in these Check out our animated upskirt here of the pancakes. Got a little naughty there for ya. The family will love these pancakes. You're gonna love these pancakes. Put some rabbit shits on them, why not? Sprinkle some cocaine. Everyone's gonna love it. Strawberries go great on them too. Come on, pancake scientists, experiment a little. People say I can't make good eggs, to that I say you catch you on the flip side don't take your finger out of your hole yet folks you can even make crabby patties here no i'm not pulling your leg i can snap them right into existence piss patties urine cakes cheese clumps no matter what it is it's gonna come out beautiful the sky's the limit mm. 
Fantastic! The flippin' fantastic perfect pancake flipper upper flick your bean extraordinaire comes with X's so you know where to put your hands in case you're stupid. Yeah, you'll be flipping everyone off. If it gets dirty, you can clean it, put it in the dishwasher. Butch Hartman is a man I have nothing but respect for. He helped bring to life some extremely creative cartoons that I grew up with, Fairly Odd Parents and Danny Phantom being the two biggest ones. But damn it, how the mighty have fallen. You either retire a hero, or you sniff your own farts long enough to see yourself become the one DCMO. Mr. Hartman is now peddling an abysmal sh Kickstarter that I just need to talk about. It's also worth mentioning I still like Butch Hartman. You can criticize people you like and still like that person. So let's get into this. Hey everybody, the show's on. Gee Willikers, mom and dad, maybe you shouldn't have put on porn for the family movie night. Or perhaps at least refrain from putting on the hard R for your kids that you don't want seeing those things. Look familiar? Why, yes it does, Evangelist Butch. It looks like bad parenting. But no, that's not an option in Butch's world. He blames it on the media, as does most people these days. For some reason, there's this belief where it's never the parents' fault, it's always the media. Despite the fact that the parents just hand their kids an iPad and tell them to go wild while they go lay in the bathtub with their soft dick in their hand and then get outraged when they find out their kids saw a nipple, maybe it's time Butch and everyone else starts acknowledging that it's not the internet's responsibility to raise their kids. Maybe some of that falls on the parents. It seems like today's shows are meant more to shock people than uplift and inspire them. Yeah, if that's the kind of show you're watching. It's not like they've just phased out family-friendly content and just filled it with tits and blood and guts. There's still a lot of options out there. I just recently met an eight-year-old who told me that they'd seen The Exorcist and loved it. <laughs> loved it? I mean, think about that. The only way the eight-year-old could have loved it is if they'd already seen so much other dark stuff that they'd become immune to that sort of thing. No, no, Butch. I don't mean to poke holes in your bulletproof math here, but... That's not the only way that kid could have enjoyed The Exorcist. It's almost like kids aren't the robots you think they are, and they all have different tastes, thus they're entertained by different things. Now whether or not that 8 year old should have seen The Exorcist, well that falls on the parent. But it's ridiculous that the only thing that Butch can surmise from this story about the 8 year old and The Exorcist is that he had to have been contaminated by dark stuff already to enjoy it because it just doesn't compute with Butch that kids are humans, not machines, that all have different tastes. They're not pre-programmed to like the same type of shit. So it's not unbelievable that there's an eight-year-old that liked The Exorcist without already being exposed to the evil, dark media that you think he has, Butch. The smartphone has become a gateway through which all kinds of questionable influences can enter. Parents, aren't you tired of being constantly terrified that your child is going to see something that they shouldn't? Parents, aren't you tired of letting the internet do your job for you and then getting upset when it doesn't do the exact job you wanted it to? The solution is simple, don't step in under any circumstances, continue to let them roam the internet unsupervised, but make sure they roam Butch Hartman's Oaxis part of the internet, the only safe place. Welcome to Oaxis. A 24-7 entertainment platform with high-quality, family-friendly entertainment as its central mission. Sound familiar? Well, it should, because this already exists in a lot of different places. Biggest one being Netflix. You can create entire kids' account, and they only have access to kids' content. I don't know what hole he thinks he's seeing here that he's going to be butt-plugging with O-Axis, because it's fundamentally just a family-friendly streaming service. That's 100% what it is, and there's so much of that already. We're going to use the power of the smartphone and other personal devices to our advantage. We're going to start off as a subscription-based streaming service, and we're going to have everything you've come to expect from networks you're familiar with, but without the heavy focus on negative subject matter. That's such a non-statement that doesn't tell you sh**. He might as well have just said, we're going to give you laser beams in your eyes. What do you mean, we're going to give you what you expect, except without the heavy focus on negative sh**? So you're going to give me everything the other streaming services have, so I can still watch the hard R sh**, but you're going to censor it, I guess? I, I don't really know what you're saying with that, Butch. Or maybe he meant we're going to give you all the family-friendly content you're used to getting, but still without the negative impact shit. So you're going to censor the already family-friendly content? I, I really don't know what you're telling me with that, Butch. We'll have all original high-quality dramas, sitcoms, feature-length movies, animation, and kids shows. Plus all the other things you love. Sports, fitness, reality, news, video games, and more. 
We'll even have a user-based upload feature. Man, Christmas has come early. Throw away everything else in your house that isn't an OAxis subscription, because this sh apparently has everything. Do you need a new car? I'm sure OAxis has one for you on its service somewhere. Jesus Christ, OAxis is like Pandora's box that just unleashed all of the bad ideas at one time upon the world, and the only thing left in that box was Butch Hartman's soul. Even still, none of this is a unique idea. There's so much competition for this. YouTube Kids being a huge one, however poorly it's run, it's still a very viable family content streaming platform for the most part. But how are you going to take negative shit out of the news? Are you only going to broadcast news stories that are about sunshine and puppies made out of flowers? It makes no sense. And even if you did pull all of this off, it's already been done before, Butch. It's just not a good idea. And you're only asking for $250,000 to make all of this come to life? You've got to be snorting coke off of Danny Phantom's thermos to be thinking that number's enough to get your shit going. I understand you're not using 250 k for the entire thing, but you're using it for your phase one, like you say a bit later in their pitch. And it's still just way, 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 way too low to get this going in any fashion whatsoever. You couldn't buy a single show for your streaming platform. You couldn't even get it all built for $250,000. Actual investors wouldn't even take the time to spit in your face for $250,000. That will allow you to upload your own family-friendly content whenever you want. Daughter's birthday party? Let's see it. Son's graduation? Upload it. Anniversary? Trip to the zoo? Share it. But understand, this is family-friendly. It has to meet our high-quality standards and pass through our special OAxis filter. Let's make it fun. But keep it clean. Watch out, Oaxis is the YouTube killer here. I'm sure they're also going to be releasing a Battle Royale component of Oaxis as well to compete with Fortnite and take that down as well. I just can't see that going over well. There's just nothing else to say about that. I don't think there's any rational person out there that's ever used the internet that hears that part right there and doesn't think it's going to be abused and just a pile of shit. Join us in our mission because we need to raise $250,000 for our first phase of startup costs. These include developing our video platform, hiring creative staff and producers to produce original content, and to acquire already finished projects that fit our entertainment model. None of which can be achieved with $250,000. You might as well be trying to buy all of those things with packs of gum. With the OAxis platform, we can change family-friendly entertainment for the better. Better in your opinion, Butch. Some people like modern family-friendly content just the way it is. All in all, this is just not a good idea at all. I'm not going to call it a scam because I genuinely think Butch thinks it can happen, which it absolutely can't for $250,000. So I really hope it doesn't reach his goal because then everyone's just going to lose a lot of money and be very disappointed when it doesn't deliver. But I mean, I f***ing love you, Butch. It's just, this idea has not only been done, but it's been done very well by companies that already have a background in this sort of thing. And essentially what you're doing is taking what they're doing and make it in, making it even more bloated by just taking every form of content that's ever existed in cyberspace. News, gaming, Twitch live streaming, kids like Fortnite, Fortnite news hour, what about grass? Let's put grass in tubes on the tube grass channel on Oaxis. And then just run that through your family friendly content filter. It's just not going to work. And especially with personal uploads where people are going to upload a whole bunch of you're not going to have the infrastructure to go through each one of those manually and determine if that meets your high standards. It's just not going to work, and even if it did, it's not a good idea. Because there's already so many options for family-friendly content out there that fill everything you have already said in this video. So yeah, that's, I mean, that's it. So yeah. I remember about 10 years ago, I saw a commercial for the most patriotic invention this nation has ever cooked up. This gadget is more American than the U.S. Constitution. This thing should be the new face of freedom. I swear, as God is my witness, what you're about to see is more American than a bald eagle smoking a cigar and eating a cheeseburger. It's called the backup. Over 100 million Americans keep guns in their homes for protection. The Second Amendment to the Constitution guarantees all Americans the right to keep and bear arms, but these arms must be accessible. That's right, baby. It's a shotgun gun rack attachment for beds. Hey, sorry, sweetheart. You're gonna need a new mattress. This one's not compatible with my tactical gun rack attachment. This is like some shit I'd see Duke Nukem using or John Wayne. This is so goddamn American, I feel like just by watching this commercial, I've been rebaptized in gunpowder. The patented backup gun rack keeps your shotgun at your bedside and is easily hidden by blankets and sheets. The intruder won't see it coming. This is the last goddamn thing a burglar is expecting when he busts into your bedroom when you and your wife are trying to sleep peacefully at night. It's as it says in the good book, Matthews 612. Forgive us our trespasses 
and we will not forgive those who trespass against us. We'll f***ing blast them with our bedside mounted shotgun. I love how they make the claim that it's expertly hidden by sheets somehow, even though it's pretty much fully exposed 90% of the time when you're in bed because you're going to be moving around with the sheets. You know, it's not exactly like it's incognito mode here. It's not disguised. What would be cool, though, if they do a follow-up, would be like a more covert spy level like gun like for example you think this is a glass but then like i flick it down here and it turns into a glock or something like i don't know this isn't really hidden or secretive it's just a shotgun that's slightly lifted off the ground i don't even see how it saves you that much time or is easier access than just like leaning over the bed and grabbing it off the floor i feel like this is a pretty niche invention here i don't know how huge the market is for people that are sleeping with a loaded shotgun as close to them as possible I don't know how many God-fearing Americans there are out there that are cuddling their loaded shotgun like a body pillow in bed, and this is the eureka moment for them, the solution they've been looking for. Now I can have the gun next to me as opposed to in the bed with me. It just doesn't seem to solve any problems. The patented backup device slides easily between your mattress and box spring and mounts your shotgun flush at your bedside, enabling access to your shotgun while in the lying position in your bed. That's a key point they make here. It allows you access to your gun from the lying position. Who's going to get a good shot off laying down? They're going to shoot the shotgun and knock themselves out with the recoil. They're not going to be able to, like, brace themselves. Plus, they're still going to be, like still a little out of it after just waking up to a burglar kicking their door in like it's i don't think anyone who's going to own this is going to be like john wick combat rolling out of the bed grabbing the shotgun off the the bedside gun rack and getting ready for action you know like their spidey senses aren't tingling danger afoot and all of a sudden they ground themselves grab the shotgun and are prepared for battle like this just it doesn't it's nothing but dangerous like you know god forbid your wife goes out to get a midnight snack. You hear shuffling around out there and you just panic and grab your shotgun off the backup and start blasting through the door out of fear. Like, it, it doesn't do anything. This is just a safety hazard. Or you come home drunk, you had one too many Budweiser's, and you, you try and stumble into bed, but you accidentally kick your shotgun that's mounted on your backup and blow your kneecap off. For only $39.95, you can own the backup to make your guns accessible to you when you need them, yet hidden and out of the way when you don't. Once again, they are neither hidden nor out of the way. They're both in plain sight and as in the way as they could possibly be. But I do think this invention would be awesome in the Mad Max universe. Like if your bed was motorized, this would be a great weapon to have on it. Like some twisted metal sh like you mount two backups with like two shotguns on the side of your bed and you just crank the accelerator like you got the pedals on the sheets and as you just drift around the corners you're poof, 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 firing from the sides of the bed so you get like a smaller bed like a twin mattress or something you just have two shotguns within arm's reach mounted to the bed and blasted them like that that would be pretty cool but not like this. For only $39.95, you'll get the valuable time that may be needed to adequately protect you and your home. It's the smartest money you'll spend in your life. Trying a different approach here, the fear approach. This might buy you those valuable seconds to save your life in the event of an emergency, but it won't. Like, you can still just put the gun under the bed and you, you, maybe you lose a few milliseconds, but I don't think that's going to be the difference between life and death. I just don't see there being a situation where you're sleeping on your back, your eyes fire open, you immediately register the situation, grab the shotgun, and immediately fire. Like, it, like it's just not going to happen. It, it's just a useless novelty gift for your f grandpappy to use or, or something. It's also highly inadvisable to have this if you have children. Like, just imagine you mount your shotgun, you got eight shotguns octuple mounted to your bed. You're sleeping soundly at night, but then your kid busts in, he had a nightmare, and he's screaming. So he, like, starts shaking you to wake you up, but he accidentally kicks one of the guns that are mounted to the bed and just blasts a hole into the wall. That kid's never sleeping again. <laughs> like, it's gonna go so hard. Like, it's just a bad, stupid idea, which is why it got discontinued. But for a glorious year or so that this was on the market, we had something special. Make your firearms accessible by ordering the backup. It's adjustable to fit any shotgun. Many customers are buying one for each side of the bed. Oh, well, of course, you, you have to buy two. 
no bed set is complete without two backups for your shotguns. Like, it would, the asymmetry would be disgusting. You only have a shotgun on the right side of the bed? No, you have to balance it out with, a, like, a phalanx turret mounted on the left side or something, at the very least, like, bare minimum. This is, again, without a shadow of a doubt, the most American, as-seen-on-TV advertisement I've ever been blessed enough to watch. I saw this, like, ten or so years ago, and I completely forgot about it. Completely forgot about it. But today, for some reason, YouTube recommended me this commercial all these years later. It's like, Charles, I know you're going to want to go down a nostalgic little ride today. So here's the backup gun rack again. Take a gander. Enjoy yourself. And I did. Oh my god. It's so beautifully silly. Self and your loved ones from unwanted intruders. The backup. This patented protection device eliminates the crucial wasted time of searching for a handgun or other forms of protection stored away in your nightstand or closet. The patented backup makes your shotgun accessible from the lying position in your bed. In this commercial, you can see a textbook demonstration on the proper way of using the backup. So you reach down in the event of an emergency, you grab the shotgun, and you wait in your sniper's nest. And when that door flies open, you say, Crunchitize me, Captain. <laughs> Blast them to Valhalla. But then why stop there? You reach over to the other side of the bed on your other backup, your backup backup. You grab your shotgun, now you're dual wielding. A Kimbo, right out of COD Modern Warfare 2. Like with the 1887s, then you just... And then you flick it to reload, bang, 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 bang. Really teach them a lesson. They came to the wrong house. They didn't know that you had backup. End of story. But I feel like nine times out of ten that this thing would be used, some paranoid dude immediately grabs the shotgun at the slightest sound of a noise at night, and it turns out, like, it's a it's a squirrel on the roof. Or worse, it's, it's his wife that's just, like, getting water or something, and she opens the door and just immediately... Just staring down the barrel of a shotgun that old Cletus is wielding just out of fear. But yeah, anyway, I just wanted to share this with all of you since it got recommended to me again. And uh, yeah, that's about it. See ya. I don't know what it is about chairs that compels people to constantly reinvent them by creating these batch insane ideas one after another. It seems every month there's a new horrible chair design. Ah, this one's made out of sawdust. You sit on it and it'll help your posture and also reduce body odor and combat swamp ass. I just made a video on a chair design not too long ago, and now there's an even design. It's just crazy the rate at which these awful chairs are being produced. So this is the anti-man-spreading chair, and Mashable says it's absolutely brilliant. So if Mashable says it's brilliant, it's probably the dumbest thing you've ever seen. It's basically a timeout chair from middle school. I'm surprised they don't put a dunce hat on the guy that sits in that. Just look at the way he's sitting. He looks depressed. He looks very scared, shy, like he's about to get beaten by his wife over there. Banging his knees together and his balls are constricted. And if he moves around, it's going to be like a Newton cradle in his nutsack. This is just not a very comfortable sitting position for most men. If you took his pants off right there, it'd be looking like Homer Simpson strangling Bart Simpson if Bart Simpson was his nutsack. Its testicles need room, and the sack needs room, otherwise everything gets strangled and uncomfortable. That being said, the men that flail out their legs are obvious douchebag assholes, but it's not just a man problem. Women do that same thing too. It's not exclusive to one of the genders. Anyone can spread their legs out, taking up way too much space. I don't know why all of a sudden it's been named after men. It happens for all genders. How socially inept are people these days? This isn't a solution to anything. The solution for someone taking up too much room is politely asking them, hey, can you scoot over a little bit or not take up this much room? A conversation with someone is typically enough. Unless you're squaring off with Cobra Commander from G.I. Joe who happens to be man-spreading on your subway, then yeah, maybe he won't budge, but most people aren't opposed to moving their legs a little closer together if you nicely ask them to. But to say they need to curl up into a fetal position little ball sitting down like this chair makes them, that's not exactly considerate because that's super uncomfortable. The nutsack needs a little bit of room, which is why the legs typically get spread out a little bit. You see, if I saw a dude sitting like this with his hands on his knees and sh**, 
like this, I'd assume that he's hiding something from me, like he's concealing a deadly weapon down there that he intends to use. It's a suspicious looking posture in seated position for most men. All curled over like that, looking all proper like they're at the bottom of the pyramid on a cheerleading team. It just doesn't make sense because no one's going to willingly sit like that because it is uncomfortable. And also, this chair doesn't help with the issue of spreading your legs too far, both men and women, because you can just rest your legs on top of it. It's not that high. Unless it's coated with barbed wire and broken glass, it's not going to hurt you that much. It's just a, it's a useless invention. I don't know if they plan on selling this. I didn't bother looking into it more. I imagine they will try and sell this as like a novelty chair for someone who thinks they're fighting some noble fight against the man-spreading menace, the epidemic of legs spread out too far. But it's still, no matter what, even as just a one-off thing, just a f***ing dumb idea. And this is where I get totally lost on what their idea is here. They make it, they make the kryptonite to their own chair with a man spreading chair that teaches you to spread out further than you need to. I, I don't know why they say only women can use it. I don't see some type of biometric lock on it that's going to prevent a man from sitting on that chair and spreading out. And I don't know why you'd be teaching people to spread out if you're, what you're trying to stop is the spreading out. I, I guess they just want the women to be the one to spread out, which I don't f get at all. If I was a woman, I would be genuinely offended and insulted that this product exists because it treats women like they're too f***ing stupid to know how to spread out. So instead, they're going to charge you money to buy this chair to put a little f***ing wood block where your vagina is. So that way you spread your legs out. Charging you money for man-spreading training wheels. It's embarrassing. I just really don't get it. Again, I don't know if this is something they're trying to sell or not. But my god, even the fact that they invented these two prototypes is just insanity. Just straight f***ing lunacy you don't say i mean it won't even act as a band-aid on the problem and it, it's not a problem in the first place it's an imaginary problem there's not some type of f pandemic sweeping the world where men are spreading their legs out uh, across the entire f row of chairs or across the whole subway doing full length splits you can ask someone to scoot their legs in closer if you need the space. I don't think there's going to be many people that are rolling up their sleeves ready to fight you because you asked them to scoot their legs a little closer in. It's f***ing ridiculous. And also, Mashable sucks. I hate this trend where they bold random letters, so they bolded forever and manspreading. It's like they're subliminally trying to send me a message telling me to keep manspreading forever. <laughs> It's not a problem faced by only women. In fact, it's not a problem faced by many people at all, but it's not exclusive to women when there's someone spreading their legs too far. That affects anyone that wants to sit around the area. Yep, just absolute garbage, but hats off to anyone that wants to pay for some of these bad boys. You know, maybe I'm wrong and this will catch on huge and I'll be going to a restaurant and I'll have to ask to order the man spread proof booster seat. Or I'll have to take like a driver's ed course of manspreading, learning the proper ways of sitting using these chairs. It's just an unbelievably ridiculous idea for a product and just a big old pile of shit. That's about it. See ya. There are some products out there that I'm convinced exist solely to capitalize off irresponsible idiots that serve as nothing more than a public dunce cap for people to point and laugh at you because they can immediately identify that you are just stupid because you bought it. These are things like a shake weight or an NFT. Now I know some sensitive Sally crypto bros are probably a little upset that I mentioned NFTs here, but you have to admit how incredibly comedic it is to watch all of that money burn up over JPEG pictures of monkeys wearing hats. It is remarkable that anyone ever bought into the scam to begin with, which is why they get laughed at so heavily when all of it crashes. It is just one of those products that people will make fun of you for. You know, sometimes tough love is required. I'm not going to sit here and baby you, pat you on the ass and tell you a good game because you spent 15 grand on a f***ing Google image that's minted on the blockchain. You just got to buckle down, grit your teeth, and face the reality that you bought something dumb. It's just that simple. But don't worry. I'm here to give you the final boss of dumb products. It's called the Mutalk. You probably already have heard of this because it went viral on Twitter recently. This is just one of those products that serves as this beacon to highlight financially irresponsible fools that are just so f reckless with their money they buy anything.
Yeah, this absolutely looks like a fetish. This looks like some kind of BDSM gear out of Cyberpunk, but instead of getting a brain dance, you're getting a mouth dance. Now I know what you're thinking. Hallelujah, our prayers have been answered. For too long, we've been plagued by voice leakage. It's probably one of the number one complaints I have in the modern society. I'll go out in public and I just hear so much leakage, and it's it's overwhelming at times, you know? I just get sensory overloaded, I start to melt down, I curl up into a fetal position because I'm hearing all these conversations. But gone are the days of having that kind of meltdown, because now we have this muzzle that's available where you put it on your face during a, a phone call, a meeting, or a gaming session, and you can yell, scream, hoot, and holler all you want, and no one's gonna hear you. Also, for people who have been around the channel for a while, you'll know that five years ago I made a video on something very similar called the Hush Me, which is this little saw trap for your face. It basically aims to do the same thing, but it's more focused on making sure people can't read your lips. So it's only actually good if you're some kind of super spy engaging in espionage and you don't want anyone to see what you're saying or who you're saying it to. But it's fundamentally the same idea. Just a f***ing muzzle. So taking a look under the hood here, you have a little toilet seat for your face, and it looks like it goes directly into the microphone. So my heart breaks for anyone that you're having a conversation with over the phone, because every time you answer a question, it's going to be just screamed at them. It's going to be some way too dank shit. It's going to sound like an absolute wall of noise. It'll be ear piercing because it's directly into the microphone and all of it is concentrated right into it. Unless they've somehow dampened it, which I imagine they must have, surely that would have been a problem that they would have identified during testing. But then I feel like an even bigger problem they should have identified is how f***ing stupid wearing this looks and why no one would ever subject themselves to the public embarrassment of having this strapped to their face. Now I think this is completely unusable in public unless you're cosplaying as Bane from Batman or if you just want to make sure you can scare every single person in the immediate environment around you. It's just, I don't see any case where this could ever actually be acceptable to have on your face. It's alarming. But I think the idea of having some way of dampening sound for private conversations in your own home could be useful for people that live in apartments with thin walls or if you're in a dormitory or any kind of shared housing really where you know you don't want to be like uh, you know, loud around other people and disturbing them i could see the core idea itself having some merit of just like dampening sounds so that way like your roommates aren't hearing you but it's certainly not this horse feeder there's got to be another way because at that point you can just soundproof your room and it'd be a lot less creepy <laughs> So here you can see some ideal use cases, for instance, use in the metaverse, which no one's in the metaverse, so no one's going to be using it there. Though I think if you did buy into the metaverse, you're probably stupid enough to actually buy this, so perhaps this might see use from the four or five people that actually engage in metaverse shit. But the next one is gaming. So if you're a gamer who gets a little rowdy, maybe your parents would get this for you to like <laughs> treat you like some kind of criminal in your own home like Hannibal Lecter strapped to the table with a muzzle over your mouth because you yell too loud when you celebrate a big dub with your boys like I feel like that'd be so shameful like hold on a second guys uh, I'm going AFK I need to grab my gamer muzzle because I'm about to get really excited and heated in this one they come back with your face strap on like, it's so goofy and then the other one is use in meetings in a noisy place Maybe I could see some mental gymnastics to justify that, but I'll raise you a better solution. Don't take your meetings in a noisy public place. Go anywhere else. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. No, 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 no. Ah. 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 Quiet. Oh jeez, my wife just came out here and told me that my yelling is making it difficult for her and her boyfriend to fall asleep. Uh, I guess I was getting a little too rambunctious. I'm sorry, dear. I didn't, I didn't mean to keep you two up. Uh, I'll go ahead and get the gamer muzzle out from the closet so that way you two can get a good night's rest. Yes! Yes! 
Another glaring issue with this is after some use, it's going to be revolting, just truly disgusting, and you're going to have to clean it out frequently because it's just a cup, a little diaper for your mouth where it's catching all of your spit, all of your everything that comes out of your mouth into one giant petri dish in front of your face. It's going to be like a trumpet spit valve. It's just going to be gross and it'll probably end up breaking the mic over time because it's going to be constantly wet and moist it's going to be this damp environment you're going to form your own little biome in the goddamn you talk so you're going to have to be like actually scrubbing that shit out it just seems like such a hassle with very little upside you could also just control your own volume if you're someone that gets really you know animated and goes super hype mode for gaming and you live in an apartment with thin walls just maybe learn to simmer down a little bit until you can properly, like, soundproof the room. I wouldn't recommend getting this. I don't know why you'd want this muzzle. It makes no real sense when there's easier ways of, like, dampening sound that don't require you to look like this. Also, when you pair this with VR, which they're hyping up a lot, it makes it look like you've been kidnapped by some kind of kinky pervert. So, like, you, you actually just look like you're in distress when you wear this in combination with, like, all the VR gear. He's not wearing headphones in this screenshot here, but add the headphones, and you've got yourself, like, a hostage situation. Overall, I just don't see any practical use for the Mutok other than just being, like, this badge of dishonor where you can proudly display that you bought the Mutok and people can laugh at you for it. That's it. I just, I, I don't see why anyone would actually want this. Again, I do think there is merit to the idea of having something to dampen sound for like a shared home environment or thin walls, but this isn't it. There's definitely something else that can capitalize on that idea. So yeah, I just want to talk about this. That's about it. See ya.